TLC. We've got Noxious and Tannen yeah. on the bench here. How's it going, guys? I'm doing great. Uh, Tannen's great. actually a guest caster like Forsen was. Um, you'll be as good, right? Uh, I don't think I can live up to the Force and name. I don't know about that. Yeah, is it Cloud Nine or Cloud Nine? Uh, I think it's Cloud Nine, but right. I could be incorrect. So yeah, you probably yeah. are. Yeah, it's up to an interpretation. Yeah. Anyway, we have a Tempo Storm and Nyla match coming up for you guys. It is the the losers match. The two losers from yesterday are playing. Um, and the the winner of this match will be playing the loser of the match we, ju we just saw. They'll be playing against Valley Town. Right. For the second seed tomorrow is going to be the, the finals finals tomorrow will have the third and fourth seed open up in their first game they will then play the winner will then play against the second seed which we'll find out at the end of today and the winner of that will be in the final against cloud nine which has advanced they are the first seed they are two zero yeah so that's what's going on that that's what we've been leading up to and uh, you know this if you lose this match, it's not too big of a deal, but it's good to win. If you win here and then you win again, you basically get a free win where it really, yeah, really guaranteed, counts. pretty much. I mean, uh, you know, Terrastone's a game where uh, there's a lot of random elements, and you just you just do your absolute best. And uh, this is another one of those times. You know, if you lose, you can still come out and win the tournament, but uh, you do want all the little advantages that you can sum up in, in, into your side. Yeah, and also, you know, Cloud9 is guaranteed prize money. So at this stage, they're very safe. Um, and everybody's kind of competing for that third place, uh, at least. I think they're competing for, for first place. For first place, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, like Cloud9 is very safe right now. They're feeling super happy. I mean, Ecob was flipping Hearthstone pillow during the boss. So, I mean, they... Yeah, he was really excited. You yeah. saw him there. Yeah, I, I don't know why he'd be excited. I mean... Yeah, it's it's only like up to hundred fifty thousand dollars for first place. I mean, I mean. It's like one dinner. Yeah. Yeah, you're good to go with that, right? Yeah, it's not. It's um, not even that much. So before we move on to the next game, no Temple Storm versus Nihilum. Mm -hmm. uh, some people say Temple Storm might have a little bit of trouble. Some people hedge their bets, you know, on Nihilum or, or against uh, Temple Storm. But I think Cloud Nine believes that Nihilum overall has brought weird lineup yesterday, and because of that reason, they might have a, they might struggle a little bit. Uh, before we move on to the match, though, a little shout out to the sponsor. We got Amazon App Store, of course. You can check them out at uh, Amazon.com/slash Hearthstone and Alpha Draft as well. If you want to draft your, uh, you know. Fantasy League for ATLC. Check them out on AlphaDraft.com. Yeah, we're also running a little bit of a cool promotion. You guys saw in the clips earlier during the break that some of the Cloud9 players, some of the other players were signing some shirts. Yeah. Those are some Alpha Draft shirts. I believe there are eight of them, and uh, we're giving them away through Twitter. All you have to do is go to Archon's Twitter and just uh, tell us something about your favorite player. Just to say who it is, say something cool. Uh, I mean, so far, my favorite player has been uh, Murloc Knight. That yeah, counts, right? Great, great player, right? Oh, that counts. Yes. Yeah. Cloud9 and Murloc Knight. What's his name? <laughs> give him a name. You have to give him a name. Oh, I don't know. I'll think about that. I, I would have given him Burgle, but now that it's a card, I think it doesn't fit anymore. It can't be Burgle and Murloc Knight. Do you have an idea? All right. Just old Merc guy. Just give him the name of what, what won the game for him. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Yeah. Pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. All right, let's move on. Let's let's see what the teams brought again. Again, the players uh, were not able to change their deck at this stage in the tournament. We are still in the seeding stage as right. we started yesterday. Both these teams lost their opening games yesterday. That's why they're here in the losers match. And uh, again, they're playing the exact same decks, but tomorrow they will be able to bring decks. So possibly the teams that didn't go so well, maybe they'll really work hard to uh, maybe have a little bit better lineup. Uh, from what we see, we see that Nylum has been the only deck to not include Hunter. I believe in one of the weeks they didn't include Warrior. So they've, yeah. they've been really out there with some of these uh, some of these decisions. I blame RDU. I mean, RDU is a great like RDU overanalyzes things based on uh, what uh, mm -hmm. Thais told me that you know RDU likes to analyze the matchup. He's actually prides himself on getting it right. Uh, but sometimes it doesn't work out. I mean, the Mech Shaman we saw yesterday just completely got demolished. Had a chance to win, went all in um, on some of the plays, but. It's still a debatable pick not to bring a hunter because even if you don't try to target a specific class, it's still got a pretty good chance against uh, the entire field. All right. Well, when you have a bad deck in Conquest, the best thing to do is just to start with it, hope it randomly cues into something you could just crush. So uh, I I believe I really really approve of this strategy for RDU to open with uh, Shaman for Nylum. One thing to remember again that uh, RDU as well as Eloise from Tempo Storm, uh, they weren't able to uh, make the event. And uh, because of that, they are playing a bit remotely, which is why, um, which is why the uh, the players have slightly different backgrounds. All right, so we have Mech Shaman again from RDU. He's going to try to brute force a win here. Um, have you seen a lot of it? I mean, in the past, I think we've seen it last time we casted together. I think uh, this is a Mech Shaman still. 
after yeah, TGT? Yeah, you still see it. I mean, it's one of those decks you, I think people uh, try to get free wins with. You know, you feel that, as as Crippet said, it's not one of the best decks in Conquest, but you feel that you can kind of steal some wins from some different decks. How do you feel that this matchup goes, you know, the Dragon Priest versus it? I have to assume Mech Shaman would have uh, a little bit of a rough time because, like, they, they want to win the board against Priest. Typically, you can do it, but I think baseline control Ooh. Priest uh, would ruin Shaman. I think that hasn't changed oh, much. Oh, there it is. Oh, my God. The, the other crazy dragon. top deck. I was going to say. Easy game. Yeah, that's it. All right. Good that's game. That's not it, but it's, it's looking pretty bad here. Oh, well. Earth that helps a bit. is a good answer, but uh, Garage is going to keep drop, dropping threats here. Um, if, if he didn't get that dragon, it's it's not like he had to play it anyway because he knows it's mech shaman. Mm -hmm. So because it's two three, you feel confident. But then you you guarantee the the taunt yeah. uh, the following turn, which is very very nice. Yeah, there's a, a bit of a dry turn for RDU. I mean, he can play mech warper, but the thing is, you get worried about Velen's chosen, of course. Um, but you kind of can't play around it, right? Because you can't yeah. beat it. Yeah, you can't do too much. Yeah, I mean, he has to get some development on the board here. I mean, this pile of Shredder is going to be able to check a lot of the minions. It's going to be coming out of the Priest deck here. But he has Ooh. to get something going. Chill, Ma. Yeah, that's pretty convenient for, like, the late game stage. Because Shaman might still be trying to get a board. Um, if you can control the early game, you typically get ahead. But you can still slip out of your hands. Oh, I don't know if I like that attack. Um, I feel like you just set up the trade here. Yeah, I mean, you're giving him a Shredder in this exact case, so it's going to work out pretty well for RDU. Anyway, right? But if, yeah, yeah. if you don't attack, you... You, you, do, you don't lose the 2-4 right, right, right away. Yeah. So you stop the Shredder twice. You, you do play around Flame Tongue, however. Uh, yeah, but if you Flame Tongue's here, do you really care? Only if you get a Noitron as well. Yeah, so you'd have to coin out a Noitron and Flame Tongue. Oh, that's a bit tricky, actually. Yeah, well, Lightbound might be nice. I think the main... The main issue that Priest has is they like they have to win the early game because um, the the Dragon Priest these days they have like some of the Priest cards that control the board they have the creatures that are very strong controlling the board but what they don't have compared to traditional Priest decks is like burst healing like yeah. once you've taken like twenty damage or something That's it. your opponent's just gonna get lava burst and crap you're going to die yeah. You don't so, play heal bot, right? Right, and one good thing for, for RDU here, he's actually regaining the board here because Gara didn't actually do anything on turn four besides push a little bit of damage. You know, no hero power, no actual card played. So getting back in the game here for Mech Shaman, this might be a, a little bit of a closer and more of a competitive game than we thought to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Earth Shock was probably pretty important for RDU early on. You know, being able to deny the uh, the well, he could have used a Rock Biter to handle it. I believe he's uh, thinking about playing the Drake here to follow up with Light Bomb that would clear the board. If he plays the Death, he's probably going to have to Light Bomb next turn anyway. Yeah. And he's never really going to get a chance to play the Drake. And you might force RDU into a position of trading the Shredder away. Is there a reason why RDU would do that? Uh, I don't know if you. Yeah, if you maybe you really don't. saw yesterday's games, but yeah. RDU is not familiar with <laughs> right. the trading concept. Uh, yeah, he went upstairs with all of his cards very early, and he <laughs> vehemently defended his plays as well on Twitter. Yeah, I read that uh, wall of text. Like I, when you look at it from his perspective, I think it actually made sense the plays that he makes. But every time I see him play Shaman, he's one of the most all-in players with the deck. Uh, with Mech Shaman specifically. I rarely see him make trades, whereas like a player like Oskaka plays the same deck in a much more defensive and slow way. Yeah, every time I've seen Oskaka play, you see him take some weird lines yeah. where, you you know, I might not get it right away, and then two or three turns later I realize, oh yeah, his play is actually just better. But, you know, RDU plays it the way that almost everyone else does, where, you know, the deck seems so all-in, why wouldn't you play it that way? You know, yeah. just move in whenever chance you get. Too. I think the initial design of the deck was also tailored for that, in a way. Um, all right, so Gara is gonna get a semi-decent light bomb. I mean, he's gonna kill, uh, you know, one minion and spawn two more. Yeah, but those two might suck. Yeah, and one does, and, and the other, other one, one does. does. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the power mace is actually not too bad here, right? You yeah, can I mean, he's still got, that guy. Yeah, he's still got a mech on board here, so there's a chance he gets a little value here from it. Ooh, spell damage. It is kind of bad actually because um, four four. Oh no! Actually, the rock fighter can kill Chill Moth. Yeah. And the death rattle of the mace would trigger before the death rattle of Chill Moth. So the Mech Bear Cub would actually survive. And hit for four. Yes. Which I mean, again, Gar still has the answer to that with a Twilight Guardian. Uh, but he's got a lot of. I mean, there's a lot of uh, burst damage in RDU's hand, right? Like another crackle, another lava burst might seal it in a weird way. I mean, yeah, yeah. Not, not a very weird yeah. way. Very standard way for this deck, actually. Yeah, I mean, RDU. The has weird the part would be just sealing the game at all. 
Right, I guess we haven't really seen that. <laughs> oh man, shots fired! Yeah, shots fired! Yeah, I in all of my casting, I, I haven't seen this deck do very well. I mean, I think yeah. it's got something like a twenty percent win percentage in the games Actually, that I cast. It's done pretty well in this tournament, right? Uh, because before TGT, uh, a lot more uh, the combo class is much more volatile. Like people are playing Freeze Mage, and this is stealing some wins. Uh, the Oh, he wants to utilize a spell damage that's yeah. going to be removed yeah. off the board. I think it makes a lot. Oh, top roll to compensate for yesterday's Laurel. You gotta average out the uh, the variance sometimes. And yeah, Guard didn't like that either. Oh, I don't he's know gonna try to get a spider tank up instead of using the rock biter. Because I mean, he does run two Whoa. doom hammers. We saw that yesterday. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, maybe he's holding on to rock biter as a burn spell but here. Why, why didn't he just play the spider tank? There? Shadow or death. Uh, Nova, maybe because he it would actually... already got Shadow or Death, and it wouldn't be a Nova. It would have, have three health. health. Yeah, it would actually live through that. Yeah, maybe just playing around exactly the, the second target. Shadow or Death. I'll, I'll read Reddit later. Already, you will tell me. <laughs> it was some strategic. Uh... I mean, I think it makes sense if you think about the Twilight Guardian as one of the possible follow-ups. Um, it would live. Uh, but... Wow, that's rough. Yeah, already using a rough spot here because he's not going to be able to attack probably for the rest of this game now. It's going to be really hard for him to get to this Twilight Guardian. Right. Unless he draws his last remaining Earth Shock. Doomhammer, right? Face cool. tanks 10 and just go to town. Yeah, I guess the Doomhammer Rockbiter will get through it also, but he's got to find him. running two Rockbiters. Two yeah, Doomhammers. two Doomhammers, yeah. I think he was banking on that as the reason he kept with the Rockbiter instead of killing Chilma with it. Because um, it's actually a huge chunk. It, it's a good, like it's one of the major reasons. More damage and had more board though. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand what. Yeah, what why? Why you behind wouldn't... saving the rock biter was? Yeah, and every turn that he doesn't find one of these answers now, you know, Gara, you have to believe he's going to hero power himself every turn for the rest of the game. He's going to mm -hmm. almost never forego that from here. Right? Yeah, because you can play minions as long as he keeps playing minions on the board, and he doesn't need to just heal the minions up. Um, to keep up with the shaman, he can just you know heal himself, play a Drake, then maybe find another guardian, play that. So, yeah, looking pretty good for for Gar still. Not impossible. Even, like yeah, you can use both cards to kill that thing and lose your board basically. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, and you probably just lose the game from there because you just right. have nothing left. Holy Novo would seal this completely. Oh well, you know that kind of does too in a weird way. No, is, um, is there ever a world, world where you just double up on Valence Chosen here, or do you just have to play around the second? I, I might I might be cautious about the uh, the earth shocks and I guess the whelp would die but it doesn't have taunts so you're okay if it gets earth shock. Yeah, I think you as you drink see what you get and uh, do you actually set up for lethal if you hit for yeah you do yeah you for next lethal. turn yeah so you can Velen's chosen the uh, the Drake but earth shock and, and you think you lethal. die though right yeah I mean RDU's yeah. had multiple of these yeah it's not, it's not for... uh, the thing is. He's holding two cards. You know those cards are probably spells. You know if he draws a third one, you're probably dead anyway. Yeah, will a bolt. So you have to really like it. It might not be the best idea to do that, but you have to consider the fact that um, you know if you just stall out the game and heal for two every turn, you you probably just lose that way as well. You might even lose next turn or next I mean, two turns. Depending. I don't mind the tr like kill the spell damage totem or these Apomatic, depending. Like you can kill the two max, the two max really if you wanted. All right, so he's gonna keep. Uh... All right, so remove the spell damage. There's a 33% chance it comes back. Okay, it's kind of like a compromise play. Yeah. Just get that heal every time. Power mace. Uh... Well, how would you like to take seven damage? Well, you can actually go ahead use that and lava burst to kill a big Drake, right? Like that's that allows you to go through. Yeah, I mean, this is something that he just has to do at this point, right? I mean, he can't yeah. just sit around and wait for you know, hopefully top decks and Gara not have anything for the next. He has turns. to use that. Yeah, there's no, there's no way he doesn't. All right, Ardu is just gonna go all in to kill one minion and two villains chosen. So it's like, it's kind of okay though, because the spider tank lives in theory, mm -hmm. right? In theory. Uh, I think some players even trade here, but I don't, I don't think Ardu would consider that. Trading? No, I don't think RDU considers trading. It's, it's not a viable uh, approach. Would you kill a Whelp just because you get healed uh, and you're out of Nova range anyway? The only reason to kill a Whelp is Holy Nova and like Velens later on or something. But he's It's already been used, here. right? Velens have already been used. I mean, both of them. Protector 1 1. What? Yeah, you want to get, you know, all that spell damage value. Okay. Holy Nova. Oh my god, the Drake Nova turn for Gara. Yeah. That's going to seal it. Yeah, um, it looks pretty sealed, but it's still really possible, know. right? Yeah. RDU looks devastated. My apologies. Oh, Gara knows that RDU is a tilt prone player. Gara's got the, the BM tactics. Mm. I like this. Your opponent's at 16, you're completely out of cards. 
Um, you're dead in three turns. You're probably dead in two turns. You have so to try to kill the Drake. Because if you pick up a Doom Hammer, you might actually be able to race. You have another Rock Biter. It, so. Well, the, okay, let's talk about that. So if you pick up a Doom Hammer, the most damage you could do right now is Spell Damage Totem Crackle for seven. You could do ten this turn, which means you need to do eight next turn to steal the game, which means you won't. So you have zero percent chance to win if you do that. So oh, yeah. I think you actually have to crackle the drake. Yeah, right, right. You crackle the drake. You go face for three, and then or you wait for a mech. I guess you could try, but then Doomhammer doesn't what he's come thinking up. About, I think he's thinking about how many mechs he has in his deck, and if it's actually worth saving this attack versus draw drawing another weapon. Yeah, and how likely it is that the crackle just does what it did yesterday. Yeah, I mean he's already been through quite a few mechs as well. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is it. Yeah, this is exactly. Uh, what we were talking about? Yeah, Sly Grin and RDU's face there. He's got to be feeling it after those last couple turns. Yeah. You can't feel good about this. And you, you just be here. Yeah. There's no threats anymore. I mean, you could heal yourself for BM purposes, like until the end of the game, until he fatigues, but what's the point? Awakens? Oh. Oh. Could have it. Oh. No, that's a dream. Oh. RDU doesn't want to. RDU decides he's done with this uh, weird form of torture, yeah. which is uh, Dragon Priest. So. He's going to throw in the towel, Tempo Storm picks up the first point, uh, and of course Gar is playing uh, against the chair because RD is playing from home right now. Yeah, uh, RD is a chair actually. Yeah, well that was that was pretty interesting. Uh, again, we have not seen the Shaman win a game uh, in the finals of ATLC yet. But um, yeah, I, I don't really blame uh, RDU for bringing the deck. Um, I think it's a pretty good deck, it targets certain other decks. Yeah. Um, it doesn't seem to work against what most people brought to this uh, this finals, but I also admire the strategy of throwing it out there at the start. Well, yeah. I think it's having such a problem winning, you know, even a single game here so far in the finals. Mm -hmm. I think it's 05. Yeah, why do you think that's like, it just it keeps running into these decks that are being able to fight um, for the board so early? Druid's just a lot stronger with the, with the Darnassus and the fact that some of them are using earlier board control cards. Like, it used to just completely run over Druid. Um, we haven't seen a Freeze Mage yet in the finals. I think that's actually a bit of a surprise because the deck does pretty well against some of the new decks. Um, so, I mean, some of the some of the decks that it was really targeting are just not there anymore. Yeah, and I mean, Secret Paladin also has a pretty okay matchup because they get the early board, you're never getting them off of it, and they snowball. Yeah. You don't play Storm. Right, um, right. So there's like a billion ways for you to just lose it. Uh, I, I don't really know. I mean, I guess against Patron, it's all right, because they don't armor up as much as Control, but they just have to get a one swing turn, and you're kind yeah. of out of it. So. Um, you, you do always have, like, the God draw that you basically beat anything with, but RDU has not received that hand yet. Yeah. All out right. of the lineups, um, I believe Life Coach is playing just straight-up Mech Mage, so and, again, yeah. not Freeze Mage, but Eloise uh, has her Mage, and she is, I believe, the only player to have a deck that has not been revealed yet. It's the only uh, secret tech of the tournament that's left. And if Tempest Storm loses, it might remain a secret. But uh, we'll see. Hopefully not. Hope I'm, I'm actually really curious what that is. Eloise is traditionally a Freeze Mage player, but Tempest Storm as a team is a player that you know very frequently brings uh, very new, very very cutting edge yeah, decks. Mage, especially Mage decks. I've seen like most of the new Mage decks that we see end up coming from, uh, at least not not actually from them, but they do iterate on them and bring the tournaments fairly frequently. So it's kind of nice to see. Uh, maybe another variant. I don't know if you can see Control Mage nowadays, if it would be viable at all. Uh, um, I don't know. It's all a bit I haven't of play, had but... too much of an experience with that, but yeah. you know, there's always some group of people that live and die by a certain deck, and that has received some praise, yeah. so maybe. Yeah, a lot of the new Mage decks have been uh, like kind of going back to that Tempo Mage thing, with Flame Waker being so good against all the Paladin mm -hmm. decks and stuff nowadays. They feel that yeah. that deck has much better matchups now, since you know everybody's going to be playing Secret Paladin. Yeah, we, we talked about that a bit. Actually, some of the mech mages even run the Flame Waker. It's like a mech yeah. tempo mage. It's yeah. like a hybrid, right? The spare yeah. parts work super well with Flame Waker, so you just right. like, slap do. it in. Uh, it's going to work pretty nicely. All right. Well, uh, now that Gara has picked up a win, um, I don't think really the uh, the bench rules really does much against RDU. Um, so I don't know. I, I wouldn't even mind RDU trying again with the Shaman. Just brute force it. Eventually, you get a win, and then no, no, you can just get benched. Yeah. Okay. There's no eventually in this format. Just get it over quick. Yeah. Either get the quick win out of the way, or get the quick O2 out of the way, and not have to yeah. worry about it anymore. I just, I just wonder how RDU will will land on the bench at this house. Maybe we do like a virtual bench. They had a, shop him on. they had a drawing of him on a piece of paper of him like a little cry face, and they put him on the bench yesterday. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my god, that is so cringy. Well, I might do the trick. It's so awesome. Uh, if RDU goes Shaman again and gets demolished, I think he will feel demolished. Like after the 0 5 from yesterday. Because he, like, you have to keep in mind, right? The team league format, uh, your reason why the team performs. 
Um, right. You know, and, and the thing is, he has suffered in the past, like from being kind of the uh, the losing player. I think one of the, the earlier he, weeks or the mid weeks of the losing player, but he was that player that he, he got like you know fifty, sixty percent win, yeah. rate, which is still good in this tournament. Right. But he would do it in the last few games Always. of one of the sets, and he was doing that consistently. That's why Nylum literally was like by far the first, uh, yeah, the best team in the Archon Team League at the start. Uh, he was the reason they were they were so good because all the teams would get like four wins. Then, like, you know, the other team would come back and actually win against them. But RDE was just, like, sealing out each of those each of those matches. Um, yeah, these days, he's still playing the same stuff, but maybe the game has changed against that strategy. It's kind of weird, actually, that Mech Shaman just doesn't work anymore. Um, I wonder, like, he plays Tuskar Totemics, right? He pointed that out yesterday. Right. Like, he, yeah, he, the he, double Tuskar Totemics. Right. I couldn't figure out what he took out, but it was probably, like, Fel Reefers or something. I don't know. Yeah, well, he did put Fireguard Destroyers, which is kind of the sub they usually put kind in of. instead of that. Oh, it's not the Mage. All right. There's Eloise. a Mage, though. Yeah. This is going to be Eloise on the aggressive Paladin, but this is, I think, the more tame version. Is this the one without Divine Favor with Tyrion? I remember seeing a lot so, like, of high curve. Secret Paladin? Uh, I remember a lot of high care from Eloise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I believe recall. that was the case. And Life Coach is running just standard Mech Mage. So both of these decks are running very snowball type of effects, with the Paladin having a bit more comeback potential. If we do see uh, the Paladin going off on a very uh, powerful start, it's probably very difficult for the Mage to actually do anything. Yeah, they don't really have any kind of like recover effect. They just have more minions that don't affect the board right, right away. Though Blast Mage can be pretty big and devastating in this mm -hmm. matchup. Yeah, Blast Mage is one of the key ways in which you just seal the board down, because it's pretty good. It's kind of like the juggler of Mech Mage, in a way. Like, they don't play that card, obviously, because it doesn't fit in. Um, but just because you can negate the entire board of the opponent, we saw a crazy Blast Mage yesterday from Life Coach against Dog. I think, like, popped a Shredder and just took the game right away. Uh, it was pretty devastating, but I just... I don't know how good it is against Secret Valley, because sometimes you're forced into weird attacks. And you can't always kill the minion that gets buffed, uh, for instance. Yeah, it's just like it's one of the only cards that has that can affect a wide board. Yeah, like Paladin yeah, yeah. All their other cards are like one for ones of frost bolts wow. and fireballs, and that's not what you want to be doing in this matchup. You don't right. want to be like frost bolting and fireballing, say a shielded mini bot after taking its its shield that's off. Really good, by the way. Yeah, yeah. the nice hand from Eloise. I mean, I would say that she's a pretty good Paladin player, right? Uh, just based on that hand. Yeah, I mean, it just mm -hmm. confirms repentance. Yeah, negate that. Um, you can use muster, I guess, in a cool way. Revenge just stops some mech warper shenanigans, I guess. Mm, yeah, like, I mean, you you would have to play shell mini bot into it, and then you'd be able to kill whatever comes out. That's um, true. Yeah, maybe the shell mini bot is a reason. If no minion is played, then you can juggle and hope the juggler kills whatever comes out next through the muster, or use that weapon if everything fails. So, mm -hmm. kind of makes sense. What's interesting is uh, life, which actually dropped the cogmaster. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the question is, do you expect like, it to to kill, like, a minibot? Do you expect it to kill a, a, a juggler? Juggler might work against oh, it. I don't know. Yeah, like, it, seems, it seems good against some draws and bad against a lot of other yeah. ones, so I think he just wants more consistent cards, maybe. I mean, he had Cogmaster with the Snow Chugger, though. Like, that's a good one into it, too. Uh, minibot you, hits. The you thing you is, literally if... only get punished by minibot. Yeah, but that's, yeah. An, that's an, you get punished so harshly by it that maybe there's no recovery after it. Because he, he has a 2-2, two -two, you can't ping this to death. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, and then you really need to have a great follow-up to, to seal it. How do you like Life Coach coining out the Snow Chugger here, you know, kind of it's giving up? It's really aggressive, time. but I think he, yeah, he knows what he's playing against, and he needs to be ahead throughout most of the game to actually be able to win. So I, I think uh, I think I approve. Um, yeah, killing this gives I think opponent. he actually has to kill it because a lot of Secret Paladinics run Ardra Protector, and uh, he can't really afford to lose more of his board right now. He's gonna force the opponent to make a trade, but what about Noble Sack and Juggler? Would that no? You could always frostbolt the Juggle if if needed. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you could freeze him. That's that's not necessarily He's a bad about idea. This right now, like we we I don't think we actually saw Arjun Protector from Eloise's Paladin no, yesterday, no, but no. it is very common in the in the Secret Paladin. In the more aggressive ones, yeah, like in the initial list that Paladin used to run, I think when TGT came out, mm -hmm. Arjun Protector was just about everywhere. Um, but the the more mid rangey it becomes, the less frequent it is. Yeah, I mean, you definitely see it in, like, the more aggressive ones that are fighting for the board yeah. a little bit earlier, and it'd be, like, really good in matchups like this, so okay. if it well, were that, to show up. I believe that ends up being the, the correct decision there. Definitely, yeah. You get an extra two damage, and... Yeah, that, that extra two damage, like, uh, if you if you have this mindset by the end of the game, turns it to be, like, an extra seven damage, 
and usually playing this type of mage deck ends up being the only way you win. Yeah, at least there's not much healing in the Paladin deck. So from Life Coach's perspective, he's gonna be he's gonna force a trade. Elise might want to play the Muster. Uh, if the Juggler's played, there's a little bit of a punish with a Frostbolt. I like but the there's still a because, Shredder follow up because if if it does die to yeah. removal, Life Coach can't play anything with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say I really like Juggler here as well. I mean, you, you, like you said, if you get punished, you almost get to like time walk Eloise because mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, you get to you know time walk here and then get initiative back. Plus, if they just play a minion, then you get to you know either Shredder or Muster for Battle behind this. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like uh, Life Coach values the potential kill on the Juggler. I mean, it's, you can defend it because if the Juggles hit perfectly, then you get oh, punished God. really hard. This is a one out of eight. So yeah. I uh -oh. Okay, it's a good start. Here we go. Uh oh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Fifty fifty. Oh, wow. Wow. Whew. you still just you, you still trade because of yeah. the last mage. You can't let it just take off all the okay. one ones. All right, that uh, that could have been a lot more disastrous than it was. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I guess no trigger ping looks fine. If he'd have to trade the two one ones or get a choose over champion, a kings maybe, yeah, but he would freeze a minion, and then you could frost bolt afterwards. Mm -hmm. It's just the problem with these plays are it's not getting you super far back into this game. I mean, Eloise is going to continue to have initiative for the next couple of turns. She's going to scale so well against these boards. I mean, I think Snow Trigger ping is kind of okay because if True Silver is played, you can then ping and play maybe Mirror Entity. I don't know if you expect more of the mid range style yeah. Paladin to be played. Or Spider Tank, you could play that into the second True Silver no. challenge. But... Yes, Spider Tank gets True Silver, yeah. it gets like Kings and stuff. I think Mirror Entity. Is the only alternative to Snow Trigger. So you'd play Mirror Entity here and let the Paladin give you a lot, like a really good card? Well, you're behind, you need to take some risk. The Paladin's only on three cards, and you've seen that the Paladin hasn't been able to fill up these curves. So you've seen that he hasn't had one drops, it's had very poor two drops. Right. All right, well, it looks like uh, Eloise is not going to be able to answer the spider tank from Life Coach. And it's also posing a threat, right? Like, well, the, no, the, you, the you worry. Kill it with three dudes if you want. Yeah, but the worry of uh, Blast Mage forcing you to trade into it, right? Hmm, yeah, sure. Which is kind of what Life Coach is banking on. He's going to control the board by forcing Eloise um, to be afraid, basically. I kind of like just the Lothab play, and uh, I, would, I would probably just trade here. And Lothab. Yeah, I mean, the, the mage, the mech mage, it has a lot of minions, but still really not that many. It doesn't have like an endless supply of mechs. So if you just keep denying the mech, it makes Gobble Blast Mage and Tinkertown Technician really bad. I kind of like Shredder Noble Sack, because turn six, you might get another secret with Lothab, and then turn seven is Dr. Balanced. So you can probably get away with uh, curving secrets in and okay. Lothab on six. I don't think she's running that many secrets though. I believe when she did play a Mysterious Challenger, it only drew three yesterday. That was uh, RDU, I think. Was it RDU? Yeah, he okay. played a very smaller array of secrets. All right. Well, here we are. Life Coach aside again. Another tough turn. Oh, man. It's like every single turn he's been in has been uh, to answer the threats from Eloise. Well, the Frostbolt seems like a yeah. pretty decent answer here, at least. I if Eloise gets like something really bad out of it, um, it might just work out fine. Yeah, you might be able to get some value out of your snow chest. Yeah, but what about redemption? Aren't you super scared that redemption is the secret? Because I wouldn't want to give another Shredder to my opponent, right? Like, it would be so okay. scary. Well, Life Coach agrees here. Yeah. It almost telegraphs it. It feels like a telegraph. Oh, the curve here. Drop. That's insane. That is really good. And that also uh, really punishes the mirror entity. That's, that's an incredible draw, actually. Yeah. Doesn't get much better for Eloise. And Life Coach is going to be locked out of the Frostbolt. So. Actually, I think it just doesn't get better at all. Yeah, there's, there's no way there's a better there is for Eloise. There's no better yeah. card. No, it was a better card. And then look at the sure. follow up. The best too, draw right? possible. Oh, man. All right. Um, yeah, Life Coach is like his last mech is the Inpoyatron. <laughs> so he is he is absolutely struggling. Uh, he really needs tempo, so I'd imagine that he's going to leave the the Shredder just frozen. But then that denies the Doctor Boom, so maybe not. Yeah. He has the Doctor Boom next turn to start winning the game. Right. You you might yeah. Do you pin the Shredder? That's the question, really. 
Or the one one for a blast mage and Oyotron turn in the future. What do you think? Well, I mean, if you're gonna do it, you ping the shredder first before you yeah. do anything else, just to see what comes out. Because yeah, I mean, if you get lucky and a doomsayer comes out here, then you don't waste a card. Hmm. Doomsayer. Yeah, if you ping it and get mana wraith, you're okay. If you get narrow bar, you're okay. So yeah, your narrow bar would actually be a problem for boom. The problem for boom, but not your turn here. Yeah, right. Not this exact turn. All right, the shield's off. Okay. Yeah, it's a pretty good turn for Eloise again. Um, yeah, it really is. I think the the one one goes to divine shield. Lothab kills that. Oh no! I you could just get the just weapon. Just the boom yeah, good. just like throw the boom, kill Lothab, it's and then just time. yeah. Yeah, you just did not. I was trying it. some cute play with Cobb Hammer. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I just yeah. like modify the weapon. Yeah, turn seven, Dr. Boom. It's like not worth it. There's yeah. a couple of cute things you can do there, but you just keep denying the mechs and oh, other yeah, cards no like Dolphin Blast Mage. Yeah. yeah. Where's an Oyotron now? It, it's been the plan the whole game. You just keep to it. Just no mechs on Life Coach's side and no recoverability from him. Mm -hmm. I mean, because he can play Boom here, but I mean, what does that really accomplish? You're just so far behind now. Yeah. Oh, Doom's here might be nice here. Might? Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. I think you make that attack, but if you do, you do get punished by Mana Wraith and Narrow Bar. Uh, I, I think you just like have to kind of go for it, because like if you do get punished by Mana Wraith and Narrow Bar, like, where are you going to win this game anyway? You know, Where are you going to recover Wait, from you, here? You could throw Boom first, because you always have the Arc Mage on the backup. As another 7 drop you can do on the following turn, if, if it dies to Doomsayer. Let's say, right? Like Another know, relevant one might be the Explosive Sheep. Unstable Ghoul, Explosive, explosive sheep. sheep. Yeah, there's a lot if of If you get uh, Explosive Sheep, you can ping the Sheep and Frostbolt the Lothab. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually really good. There's like four out. outs, like three, three to four outs maybe. Oh wow! He doesn't need the face damage. Is that three damage? I mean, how afraid is always going to be of that? He's forcing a trade at least, probably. Let's roll the dice. There we go. Well, do it. A, there are a lot of numbers on this dice. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like of possibilities the, for this. The to go. random element yeah, it's of this turn is a little high. Yeah. Well, what have, what are we looking four for? Boombots and a shredder. We're looking for a boombot that pops a shredder and actually pops a sheep that actually dies to the boombot number two. What we're really, what we're really Does looking that for matter? is to land that divine shield on the doctor, but that's what we're really looking for. Yeah. Right do now. you make any attacks first though, like? Just to kind of see where the boom bots and stuff start going before you cog hammer mm. to make sure that you have the taunt and the divine shield at the end of the turn. Oh god. And here we go. What is this? Oh, oh that's underwhelming. <laughs> what, a, what a waste of a possible you know, mind blowing opportunity. Okay. Oh, yeah. He knows the Loth is going to die, so that's good. I don't know if the Dr. Boom is going to die. That seems. Well, I mean, you, you, what, what else are you going to kill with it, right? Oh. Oh wow. Yeah, Doctor Boom died. Not that okay. one, but if it's either oh. one, it's good. Oh, great bombs here. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. Oh, well that's uh. I think you, you want to play the uh the haunted creeper here. I think it's good if it gets hit. Three to face though. Does it matter? All right. Well. A mech or bus with perfect hits and even that like two drop mech plus frost bolts. Nope. Uh, yeah. He has to frost bolt Doctor Boom not to die here, I believe. Yeah, that's, that looks about right. Life coach looks like uh, he's a little stressed. Um, I don't know. Maybe he's just enjoying the mustache. I don't know. How, like, if you do that, how do you win? You don't. You just don't. Yeah, but well, how do you win anyway, right? Like, yeah, I'm looking at this, and you're pretty much dead. So I think life coach is just looking for any chance for him to actually be able to win this game, and I think he's gonna fail to find one because I I, I can't. I can't. Okay, so if you can't, nobody can. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think there's a possible way the life coach can actually win this game. I mean, he can elongate it by a turn or two here, but there's I don't think there's it a would, sequence of cards. It would basically involve the Lothab killing the 3-3, top deck and a mech, and getting ridiculous blast mage odds. I mean, there's been... It would, it would have to involve Eloise not going face. That's yeah. the only way he could win. Uh, when she has a, uh, a taunted up divine shield minion. Yeah, right. would you Against not your one face. minion, yeah. I mean, you, you, you have to believe she's going to go face with everything. Mm -hmm. it might be a ping on... Does he run any AoE? I doubt it. Some decks have run an AoE, like some mechs even. Yeah, you see every now and then that one Miser's yeah. you know, Flame Strike in these decks. Right. Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> okay. That won't matter. 
<laughs> yeah, Eloise stands in the light. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, there's no way that she's getting to. You don't have to put much of your faith in this one. No, it's just you know, you don't have to believe that much. It's good. I hate faith anyway. All right. Well, a mech does come down, but I don't believe it matters at all. No. Might as well hit. I mean, let's say you clear this board, you're still dead. <laughs> Let's just say you did Yeah, that. I mean, the, the Azure Mirror still kills you. It doesn't matter. That's terrible. Crazy Blast Mage! Did you see that? That was two to face. Yeah, that was yeah. good. Smork lessons. Smork. Because uh, I just killed the Dr. Boom too for value, you mm -hmm. know, just to make sure you get it off the board. You don't want it there. You already took some damage from it. You gotta pay it back a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, some people doubted uh, Eloise uh, in this tournament, uh, notably Cloud9, I believe. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, as it turns out, uh, I think her Paladin deck has cleaned up pretty nicely. I think she's played it terrifically. Uh, and, well, we haven't seen the Mage deck. That's We're still not, waiting. Yeah, it's yeah. not exactly her fault. That's all I yeah. want to see is the yeah. Mage. I mean, I'm guessing there's a lot of you know, team discussions about where you're uh -oh. going to queue up. Oh, there's right? a camera there. Oh, is, right. is there a camera? Is it cut? Is it cut? No. Oh. Okay. Can I? Yeah. No, we'll just look at each other now. Yeah. Intensely, really oh wide. my goodness. Wow. I wouldn't like to be stared at like this. Oh god. I wouldn't be surprised if her oh, doing Tice, it. Tice can handle it. <laughs> Tice has got the nerves. All right, yeah. that's never mind. It's a little friendly. It looks so. Then you start doing what the athletes do where they cover up their mouths and they're talking to each other when the camera's on. Oh, so you, can't, you can't read their lips. Yeah, okay. so they can still talk to each other. All right. I don't, I don't speak German English, so I can't really like <laughs> read the lips. Mm, okay. Well, uh, it... Uh... It's two and zero. Yeah, and they're almost getting that perfect spread of like one win per team uh, for Temple Storm, which means they're and, not and as Hype vulnerable. Really to, just doesn't care when he's playing, right? So he's just, yeah, whatever. Yeah, Hype just does whatever, right? Like he just goes with uh, the mm -hmm. patron of the druid. I think there might be some strategy in actually sending Eloise's mage because Hype has two decks that are just all Pretty around cool. strong. Yeah, it doesn't matter if um, like Gar's playing like kind of tweaked out hunter list and hype just has two strong decks so if even if eloise gets benched they're totally fine also i mean you know if you send out eloise with the mage deck no you said they don't know what it is so no idea you, what to expect how do you queue up a, like a deck specifically for that one as right. well so you get the surprise factor so that might be a good yeah. idea i don't know like how, how much of a surprise is going to be right because like people it's a big event we've mm -hmm. talked about this you should you know temple storm is somewhat willing to risk sometimes you know bringing decks that they they've uh, they've homebrewed but it seems to be the general agreement and i think you've noticed that too that like the decks seem pretty standard like mm -hmm. there hasn't been this crazy breakthrough in the meta yeah right? it's been most of the same stuff yeah so it's... but maybe maybe they're waiting for the final day right yeah like just like pull out at the exact last moment and i always know yeah. there's still some hope uh, but yeah, I'm hoping that Eloise sends the mage. Uh, I wouldn't put a pass to bring the freeze mage to the tournament. And honestly, I think there's a good chance uh, Artie's shaman's coming out again. Yeah, I mean he's now in like he can't be benched, right? So give another shot. Give also, another shot. you I think nor normally you'd assume that just hype is playing because like everything's pretty good and the shaman does okay against druid is okay against patron. Yeah, that's like actually a good point. It's uh, if the mage comes out, you have no idea what to expect. Hunter, you can. You know, depending on the the, the matchup, uh, you might be able to win it. Mech so, Shaman? Yeah, it's a little rough. It's a little rough, admittedly. It's pretty but... rough because sometimes with the Mech Shaman, you get that early push for damage, and then you you can draw lethal, into like yeah. spell lethal. But the Hunter has that aggressive potential as well. Yeah. So you don't really have as many turns as you otherwise do. He's got free lightning bolts, right? Damage. Like, how is that fair? So you can't you can't compete. Yeah. yeah. I think if you send out hyped, uh, I think you just have to play Grim Patron here and hold Druid back as like your ace in the hole and try to get a really good matchup for it later. Most likely, I think that's yeah. a, a good way to play it here. So well, I just Patron versus Mage again. Yeah. Life Coach actually has an opportunity to get benched if he loses. Um, I think the traditional Mech Mage does fairly well against Warrior, just pressures it out really, really hard in some situations. But you have to get that really strong early draw. Yeah, their early minions match up really well against the the weapons, the early weapons from, yeah. from Grim Patron. And, you know, Snowjugger can get you a ton of value if you can get it through mm -hmm. or even protect it with something like an Anoyatron. And you can just snowball to, like, pretty easy victories from there. Yeah. The other thing to consider, though, is that Hype is actually running a deck that's uh, fairly well-tuned against the more aggressive decks that we've been seeing recently. I believe Hype is playing Double Fire War Axe with Shield Slams in yeah. Grim Patron. Yeah, he has at least one Shield Slam in the deck, for sure. I, I don't remember if he had two. 
No, I don't think so. I think most of the lists that I end up including it is like a single one. Plus some experimentation, I guess, done with a double shield slam, but then uh, you're kind of detracting from your ability to draw or to wipe the board more consistently. You know, Stable Ghoul took a while before she became a uh, staple. They just realized they needed the, you know, the 15th and 16th whirlwind effect in their deck. Yeah, exactly. You know, another one, right? That, that just... one time the opponent has 70 life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I've, I've seen people 74. <laughs> I've seen people 74 oh, someone with Frothing Berserkers. Uh, before, yeah, we, so. I've, I've cast the game in ATLC where 80 damage was done. Yeah. Yeah. Can we just get something done about this deck already? Please? No, 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 no. Cool. no. It's a cool deck. It's not running over the tournament right now. Yeah. Everybody It, it seems unfair when the combo goes off, but set up the combo isn't isn't like that easy. Um there's certainly like some complaint in terms of uh the philosophy of the deck compared to what Blizzard has said about the philosophy of the game. So I understand that aspect, but I think yeah, Discounting you, that, I think the deck is, is pretty cool. Like, if you read exactly why they got rid of uh, the Little Boy Jenkins combo, mm -hmm. it's exactly why you would get rid of, you know, the Grim Patron combo. It's the mm -hmm. exact same thing. Mm -hmm. I right, Master turn one, but then without a turn two mech, that's going to be a bit clunky. But it's not as though Hyped has any answer to it right away anyway. You might be able to pull off, like, a turn three spider tank and kill the Acolyte. And Hype's hand is really bad, actually. Yeah, it's not going to be uh, amazing right no, now. No, it's just really bad. Wow. Well, he has he has like no answers to anything, and his card draw is kind of situational. Well, he's going to be a little happy with the way this turn pans out. I mean, yeah. at least you know, like it's not a yeah. If it's a Noitron or Snow Chugger here, you're in some a very bad spot. Oh, well, I guess you just coin out the acolyte. What else can you do? The thing is, you're afraid of a turn three mech. You didn't see a turn two one, so you oh, have no, to assume it's carrying up. Like, you have to put the inner rage in on. the inner rage on. You have yeah. nothing. Like yeah, that. you have to, you have to you have to draw. Yeah, I think it might be that desperate. The thing is, in Grim Patron Warrior, you really never want to use your coin, but you know this is a bad matchup. Yeah, yeah. This is one of those spots where you have to you know weigh the options. Like, do I need to keep the combo pieces in my hand, or am I going to fall so far behind? Because you you have to believe there's a spider tank coming next turn, right? There's no way Tinker Coach, down, yeah, or yeah, that Light Coach just doesn't have something here that's going to be good on turn three. You, you need to make some headway. The the other option is usually when you when you see the situation that your opponent's playing nothing in the early game. I think the fairest assumption is that you're getting fireballed pretty soon. Yeah, that's a great point. He might just think that his opponent's holding on to spells, mm -hmm. and that is a little less worrisome. I mean, in this exact case, it's not as big a deal. But he has to cycle one card. All right. All right. Yeah, he really just values that coin. Yeah. So, Mech Warper, not really. Spider Tank, I mean, he dies at Coin Death's Bite, but you can always follow it up with a Shredder, which means that your Cogmaster would then stay alive. Unless there's like an Inner Rage on it after the AoE or some kind of uh, cruel task. I just do quite a lot of damage overall. Yeah. This Frost is going to be really good this game, too, depending on how well. Oh, there we go. Let's say the, the death spike's going to be huge. If Hype were not to have drawn a weapon over the next turn or two, he could get really, uh, Life Coach can get really aggressive with Frostbolt to kind of, you know, freeze him a turn yeah. ahead of time just to make sure he'll have enough to push through and make sure no, you know, patron shenanigans happen. I think he is going to Frostbolt. I, 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 I think he's going to play Frostbolt and Mech Warper into Piloted Shredder. I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, on the following turns with the Piloted Shredder, it's going to give him a pretty big. Opportunity to deny the patrons though, like if he keeps it for turn four, or turn five that is instead. It really depends how much he values I that. I think Hype is so far behind that he'll have to use his weapon though. I think there's really an argument to be made. That he'll uh, just have to pop it anyway? Here. Okay. Yeah, I don't think Hype can actually wait. Uh, yeah, I mean this uh, Acolyte looks kind of okay. You have the Execute I guess if you wanted to just kill the no, there's no way you execute that. It's, it's horrible. Never mind. I don't know. I, you don't know? Times, yeah, man. <laughs> Desperate times. I mean, now that you mentioned, the fireball is looking really threatening. If you assume your opponent's been pinned on on spells early on. Yeah. Like, can you really pass here? Yeah. Assuming your opponent will have fireball. Because if you do a passive patron turn, you have to stay alive two more turns after this one for them to actually attack. There's no way that's happening if he has even one fireball. Yeah, I agree. Plus, you have to just incorporate, you know, worst case scenarios too. You have to just believe that, you know, Life Cup's going to either be able to fireball you or make this Cogmaster into three power again. Plus, a, a mech could just come out of this. I know it's wrong. Yeah, that's, that's pretty crappy, actually. Yeah, that's probably one of the worst cards that could have come. I mean, it's better than a novice engineer, mm -hmm. granted, but 
I think you still have to get rid of the smaller creature because it does represent three damage. It might actually be worse than the novice engineer because it doesn't just die to the first whirlwind. So if some frothing berserker thing oh. happens, this thing actually has three <laughs> toughness now. Yeah, you're so. dead. That's right. Oh yeah, good point. Although I don't know how fast you expect frothings right. to come out right now. Like in this exact case, it probably won't matter that much, but it could have uh, at some point in the late game. I mean, yeah, warrior does have a tendency to you know make games drag out a lot longer yeah. than you yeah. think they would. So there's a chance it comes up. Maybe Patron is actually like a dragon deck. I really think there's an argument who made just frost bolting face. I'm surprised Lycosh didn't do it last turn. That's kind of weird. I mean, you, the, the Master Swordsmith could be fine. Do you frost bolt this though? Is that worth it? Or do you want to keep it for the face because you can deny a weapon? Plus... Oh no, I think you should frost bolt face. Yeah, just just now. right now. Yeah, you do it like right now. You frost bolt and make board for. Like, how is he going to charge and clear your board? Yeah. He's just not. You can't even buy the power of Ragnaros. I have the power. Alright, so he is going to use the Frothball to take care of the Accolade of Thane here. You know, den 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 denying deny some draws. Card, yeah, yeah. yeah there have been two possible draws. Getting Clockwork Gnome in play, uh, kind, of a, kind of a big thing here too. Getting a spare part for, you know, Antonidas coming yeah. forward. You know, just get these Fireballs to hopefully finish the game off for a life coach. Is uh, Warsong Armorsmith into the Clockwork ever worth it? Yeah, it's kind of weird. I mean, an execute, I don't see too, like, you might want to execute. I don't think you're dead next turn, though. You might want to take one more turn. Well, there's a couple of things about putting your Warsong into play now. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah it, no follow up. You don't have a follow up, and you probably need to Warsong Grim Patron to win this game mm -hmm. and take care of this board, but. It also is like kind of a pseudo life life gain spell here. You know, if you put it into play, life coach like has to respect the card. You can't let it sit around for a yeah. full turn. So I kind of agree. I like I like the worst song Armorsmith play. Really? Okay. Yeah, Armorsmith into the two one. So you're setting up for a potential battle rage. It's not too terrible. Uh, uh, no, you're just you're just not dying. Yeah, okay, because you're getting like two more armor. You just, you just kind of feel that you're dead right now. Yeah. So. Yeah, like you you have to believe he's had the read of fireball the mm -hmm. entire game. Oh, Frothing, that's a bit more aggressive, but he's going to get, you know, two more armor from just this play. Okay. At least. Oh, quite nice. Whirling Blades. How good is Whirling Blades? It's pretty good right now. You can uh, end the turn with a 7-4 piloted Sky Golem. That's pretty or good. Or kill the Frothing with the Mech Warper. Yes, I think you have to kill the Frothing with the Mech Warper. I think you just have to kill the frothing at, at all costs. At, at any cost, yeah, any okay, sure. The game. Right, right. Even yeah. if it means summoning an old Mark guy. <laughs> oh my god. Too, too soon? That game. Or... Yeah, I think it's too soon. Okay. We, we can't make that joke just yet. Just okay. give it like another match. All right, another match. Another yeah. match. I got it. What to do? Oh. Portals online doing nothing. Well, he's, he's, he might be thinking about just saving the spare part. For Antonitis, but I don't, I don't really see the worth in that. I think the the one three, well, it is a liability in like two turns. Right now, it's an asset. Yeah, and like, is the game even gonna get to the point where you need to get a fireball off Antonitis? Antonitis himself might just be enough to finish this right. game off. You could do a like Pot of Shredder and then buff up the Mech Warper and go face for four. Does that ever play? Oh, he's just gonna kill the Armorsmith. Whoa! Somebody's got a lot of courage. All right. Yeah. 30 damage. Makes sense Let's the way. Let's do it, Hype. 5 3. This Master Swordsmith is surprisingly strong so far. Well, is, there's actually some chance here that Hype just wins the game off of this. Like some dumb explosive sheep or ghoul from the Shredder. Really? Like. Yeah. It would be so many hits on the creatures that the Frothing could hit for most of Life Coach's mm. uh, hit points. Well, it takes up three of his mana, though, right? Yeah. But you can't really charge anything in your hand anyway. So that doesn't really matter. Would you just attack into... Uh, like, because you can pop this and execute the Mech Warper. You can play it slowly. I, I, actually, I think Life Coach might be running out of steam in turn 8. Will be, like, the, the turning point. I mean, yeah, he can even attack here and get an extra card off of Battle Rage. As yeah, well. exactly. Draw two cards and kill Mech Warper if needed, which probably will be, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it, it protects the Frothing Berserker on board. So, right. Yeah, this, holding on to the Whirling Blades, so it's going to be nice for uh, Life Coach here. 
Yeah, trade up and then play the bot of Sky Golem, which is actually pretty like tough to remove. I remember there were a few lists with Paladins, you know, running the um, the Sky Golems just to punish Warriors. Yeah, it's pretty good in those control matchups. Just a big beefy minion that leaves behind yeah. something else that's gigantic. I guess time. Warriors, especially. I mean, they've got their weapons. If you can deal twelve damage mm -hmm. or you know ten damage with a Sky Golem, it's good. Six minute power blast. I value this. Is, oh man. What? What is it? You think he's gonna leave the frothy berserker again? Is that what you're wondering? I think there's some chance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, it can't really hit you for much more than. I mean, without patrons on board yet. Yeah. What's your expectation here of this frothy berserker? Do you think it's you know triple this, this if, power? If you, if you run in your one three in it, and play like your clockwork gnome, it can't do more than like twelve damage. Here we go. Right. So he values a guaranteed fireball. He, he can't whirlwind. Yeah, oh. get the extra attack. Okay, well now he can whirlwind. Slam whirlwind. Fire war axe. Whoa, that's actually pretty clean. Um. Well, you're killing only one part of the pile of sky golem, unfortunately. Um, you're also losing the whirlwind if you do that, right? Which makes it a bit more difficult. Life coach really planned out the distribution of the the spare parts really nicely, because. There's no really way with one Archmage on the board that Hyped can clear the Archmage with just Patrons. Now, is, is there ever a world where Hyped might just ignore this Golem here and just push for a ton of damage after a Whirlwind? Whirlwind push? Okay, I could see that. I mean, yeah. it's the best value you're going to get out of it for now until you hit turn 9 with Patrons, maybe. Yeah, he's pulled up a, picked up a shield block, too, yeah. so his life total is a lot safer than it was. Um... Uh, what about just armor up fire? Same turn anyway. Just after engine ice creates two fireballs. Yeah. I mean, you could armor up to maximize the amount of armor you get instead of using. Uh, you also play the axe, and then you, you get a bit more armor out of your turn. I mean, you look, look, look at that! Look, look at that X twenty one. I learned oh, the name boy. yesterday, right? Let's do this. It's a taunt. Sure. Oh no. Oh wow. Oh wow. That is actually disgusting. Finicky cloak field. Oh, that, that's it, right? It's gotta be it. Uh, for his one-off lethal. He's a one-off, yeah, he's got 11. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, finicky cloak field. Uh, on the, on the Antonitis. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not, not on the fell Cannon, God no. forbid. No, but then... Well, then you have a chance hype, of... Hype can yeah. armor up out of range. Yeah. You can attack. I mean, if she finds a ghoul, I guess well, that's a problem. But otherwise, no, does, the Falcon doesn't expert, hit her part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Falcon can hit the Antonitis, right? If you miss the Frothing Berserker, no, the Falcon has to run into the Frothing for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. So okay, so this means that um, Hyped will have twelve plus seven life. That's not bad. Like nineteen life. Yeah, he's dead to the spam of fireballs. He has to. No, find... he's not. Well, not, Antonitis, not immediately. Yeah. Antonitis is 18. He's one off. Yeah, but there's like three more fireballs. He has to find lethal by then. Right, but he has right. patrons and charger. I think he's going to find lethal by then. You think? Yes. There's no whirlwinds. I mean, I guess. I mean, you just find an inner rage and yeah. be able to go crazy. Yeah, but he's at 12 right now. But if you if you shield block, you can't play the, the war song. The no, no, shield block gives you another turn. To find lethal? Yes. I'm dubious. It does. It, it, it... No, I'm dubious it's going to work. I'm not saying okay. it, it can't work. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it can't work. It definitely can. Oh, man. Oh, God. That's a lot of damage prevented. That alone is the card he yeah, wanted. Just, well, you kind of need the ghoul to win. So you can't really play that. When do you play it? On turn 9, you can't. So you have to kind of play it now. Kind of oh, right. You're right. You can't play it. But then it doesn't really work later on. Yeah, that's the thing. There's almost no way for him to win unless he fights. I think you have to play Armor Smith and just armor up and then use the Ghoul in the following turn to gain a lot of armor. With also. one patron, and then you play Warsong in the following turn again. I think Something you're way like dead. That. Yeah. I think you're like beyond dead. Well, he has to armor up no matter what this turn. Right. That. Right. Yeah. Well, no, if he can, he can play the Ghoul and not armor up. Yeah. But if he plays the Ghoul, how does he win? I think this is the play. I mean, it's very optimistic. But... That's the play. All right, Crip. Uh, I think I agree. I mean, honestly, I think you're right. It's the way you win the game. I just okay. Life coach has 18 damage. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, can can I not win this game? No, he can't. Yeah. He, he he doesn't have lethal right now. Yeah. Aha. 
to battle. Uh, is Would you kill the Arma Smith ever? I think a frothing is lethal, by the way. How? I mean, you, okay, you wait, wait, wait. Hit for 12. There's no Death's Bite setup. He'd have to have the War ghoul, Song. The ghoul, ghoul does a lot. Yeah, so War Song, Ghoul, plus a Whirlwind effect. Four. I wonder. Five. He's considering popping the armor smith in case a crazy Seven. armor turn comes up, but there's like with two with twelve damage. No. Thirteen yeah, actually. Not That's not enough. Yeah, with thirteen well, damage. Next turn. Not. Yeah. I think here you might even just uh, fireball the armor smith. The yeah. only way you don't win the next turn is if you gain too much armor off of it. Yeah, if you fireball the armor smith then it like can maybe cut some potential frothing berserker turns, right, you know, right. it just takes so much extra toughness off the board. Yeah, I think this is absolutely the correct play, even though it seems a bit strange. No, oh, no, that is not gonna do it. No, Hype yep. has nothing he can do. He knows the fireballs are in Life Coach's hand. There's no way he can gain enough armor. There's no way he can kill Life Coach. It was a pretty close game. Yeah. I think a few more mana crystals and Hype would have had it. Uh, maybe a better draw than Tharson uh, could have stalled the game. I'm not sure how, but Patrons makes things possible that you can't really realize at the start right. of the turn. So. Uh, I wouldn't have been surprised if there was some outs there that he could have still won with, but it was uh, it was still a very very close one. Yeah, so but with that win, Life Coach uh, picks up one of this um, Mech Mage and puts up a point for uh, for Team Nylon. Yeah, I mean it was a it was a weird game on the patron side too. He had to you know he's forced into using his death fight early and right. defensive and couldn't ever you know make patrons with it to ever get out ahead. I mean he's kind of behind the entire game. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean truly the, the the patron draw wasn't great, but uh, the mech draw was like pretty bad as well and really the, the, the mech mage won anyway so it really goes to show how dominant the mech mage is over the the group patron warrior in just the standard game where neither player draws particularly well yeah it's kind of interesting though to think the life coach would bring the deck because we've seen a lot more tempo mage and less mech mage mm -hmm. uh with tgt for some reason mech mage has gotten like a huge burst in popularity um the hybrid versions mostly but uh kind of liking it I think the Fail Reaver Mech Mage got a lot of popularity right, right before TGT started. I don't know why that went away. It seemed like a it seemed like a pretty cool one. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, does it just like get blocked by Noble Sacrifice with Fail Reaver? Right, like that oh, probably true. is a big problem because mm -hmm. you end up wasting. Um, so yeah, much you always money. think about the counter as like a uh, big game. Yeah, it's and like a few small... of those. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the the get down guy stops uh, yeah. eight or ten damage just as often, I guess. Be interesting to see if Big Game Hunter actually were to start getting played more because it's funny that it's actually good against the Paladin yeah. decks now because mm -hmm. you know the turn where they do Doctor Six, like Big yeah. Game Hunter can usually actually swing the game back into your favor. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, uh, Life Coach gets a win with the Mage here. Still a lot of play left. Temple Storm has two points um, to Nylon's one. Hyped is on the verge of getting benched, uh, which may affect a Luis's Mage. Right, but uh, I still don't think it's really a big deal. Um, it's still early, I, I right? I just really like Tempo Storm's lineup here. Like whenever we we look at the lineups, even on on the winners matches, we saw both sides having like the Zoo Lock. We were never really confident about that deck. Forsen was pretty confident about it, right? He did. He but was. But I think the overall performance of it wasn't like great. Um, the only the only concern I have here is that mage deck because we just don't know what it is. But yeah. there's also like with Zoo, I think the reason for its uh, the re the way we feel about it is that when it's playing very quickly and mm -hmm. it's not you know curving in the higher you know sea giants and you know all the void cards and whatnot, which they kind of have to do nowadays. Um, you see them come out and they seem to come out consistently. So when they win a game, the game plan seems to have been achieved. But yeah. sometimes it just gets stuck with like big drops uh, all the game through. So it's kind of it's kind of awful. Yeah. Well, all right. Who, who are you feeling here? I'm feeling RDU on Shaman. <laughs> Y'all just keep saying that every yeah. single game. RDU of the Shaman. You just want to put him out there in the fire again right away. Yeah, For just... Nylum to win, right. that deck has to right. also win. <laughs> it has to win a game, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Do you think that's actually what might be holding them back? The fact that they, they have to win a game with this deck and it just seems like it can't? Um, often that's been the case. I feel this is why the Conquest format doesn't really allow people to try really cool stuff. Yeah. Um, the Conquest format has like a long list of advantages, mm -hmm. but 
after an expansion comes out, you kind of hope people play like the really crazy stuff, but they do get punished so hard for it in this format. Yeah, maybe it's time to make like uh, a last hero standing tournament just uh, to get just the like sh- two sh- weeks after an expansion yeah, yeah, comes yeah, out. Exactly, and you shake and up the meta game. To, right, change it back to conquest. As soon as like, the, we had our fun for a week, let's yeah. just go back to what works. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, maybe new decks get figured out, right? In last hero standing, and then they kind of transition into uh, well, mm-hmm. figured out. Maybe that's a big word because I remember last hero standing decks have a very different approach to deck building right um where you're typically going all in on a specific strategy expecting to, mm-hmm. to beat a uh, an opponent who's you who you know is going to be playing a specific tactic so all right well it is hype versus ties we yeah. were kind of in a conversation there so i actually didn't see what classes they queued up with warrior but, uh, versus uh warlock, warlock. warlock. oh okay right. uh Tice's warlock is it zoo He's traditionally a handlock player, but I don't think we saw a handlock in the tournament. I thought, I thought I, I saw mid range demon zoo. lock or something, or yeah. zoo, yeah, zoo, zoo demon yeah. lock or whatever. All right, so this is kind of a pretty good matchup for Nihilum once again. Yeah, not unwinnable at least. No, no, certainly not. Yeah, we've seen some of the craziest games in ATLC actually come out from that matchup. Like crazy Malgan is coming out like on turn four. It was like, yeah. It's not only that, the, the Zoo deck actually has some defensive potential against the Grim Patron deck because it has the Argus plays, and sometimes you can actually Argus up a Void Caller when you have a Malganus in hand, which often nullifies whatever kind of charge combo a warrior would have that turn. So yeah. not, not, not only can they just take the game immediately because of a super aggressive start, but they don't necessarily lose the game in the late, in the yeah. late stages. I mean, yeah, it does match up pretty well if the warrior deck has to expend all its resources early, like taking care of your board on the zoo side. You get to push for some kind of advantage in the game and then really uh, leverage your your life total as a, your hero power as mm-hmm. the game goes on because you get to start tapping in the, the mid to late game and just still applying pressure at the same time. It's hard for the warrior to keep up because you're drawing as many cards as they are. And that, yeah. you know, patron has a, a problem sometimes and you outdraw them. All right, well, we get a bunch of uh, scrawny creatures. Maybe we'll see some board control ghouls coming down. Um, we'll yeah. see. Hyped has played his bad matchups very defensively, um, but uh, I expect anyone playing Patron in this level of a tournament has a lot of experience, so it probably has a decent amount of success. The Uncivil Ghouls is not a half-bet against Zoo. It's probably one of your better lines of defense in some cases. It just doesn't always work out the way you want. Like, in this case, it's a pretty decent counter without Fire War Axe. Uh, it's kind of forcing half your opponent. Half a charge. Yeah, pretty much. Gain three life, half a charge. Yeah. yeah, it just seems like Hyped isn't actually playing any uh, it's like weapons. A shield oh, man. Why, why is Trump man. dancing over there? Why is Trump not dancing? I think it's a better question at every other time of he, the day. He's practicing his moves, man. Oh, God. He's going to win this competition tonight. Is there a practicing way harder than anyone else? If there is a competition for dancing, I've got my money on track. All right. No. Let not All right, well, we cannot give the patrons cards here. This is a must-play abusive turn. Yeah. The interesting thing, too, with the Sea Giant is that there's really only the Executes and the uh, the Warriors deck that are going that is going to handle it. And he also needs those for Dugar, you know, for Malganus. So that's he, he, there's a shortage of Executes and Patron when you're facing off against that type of Zoo list. Yeah. Easy Gnomish Inventor. Well, Hype does have the Shield Slam in his deck, too, so he's right. a little tiny bit better off in those situations than most patron decks, because that is one of the ways you win here, is, mm-hmm. you know, you have something like a, a Sea Giant or a Doom Guard go unchecked for a turn or two. If you get in that much damage, usually the Warrior deck can't keep up, but he's got, you know, one more card in his deck to help him out in that mm-hmm. spot. So, do you pop the Spider and defend of Argus, the 2-1, the to finish off the 2-4 and have a 2-2 two, two and a 1-1, oh, one, one, or is that just, that like, unplayable? Awful. Yeah. I think you just concede the fact that you might give your opponent an extra card with Battle Rage. Just forget about it. Play the Void Caller. Void Caller or Void Walker with a Void Terror in hand? Or would you go Void Walker and well, Gang Boss? There's, there's no way, like, whenever you see Void Caller, you just don't, don't kill it. Don't kill it, yeah. So, it doesn't matter what's in your hand, really. The only risk is if um, your opponent has like a big removal and he just decides to kill it because he has big removal. But um, that's a risk I mean, you're probably really going to take. Yeah. Plus, it gives him a chance to start setting up big turns down the line. You know, he can get yeah. the other demons out of his hand and then get a big void terror turn. Mm-hmm. Here it still looks pretty clean. Um, he can uh, kill off the 2 1 and uh, Battle Rage. If he doesn't get anything good, even the Acolyte seems like a fair play. You just want as many cards as you can get in your hand before you Emperor Tharson, which is absolutely happening next turn. Yeah, with the hand like this, I can't imagine. I mean, picking up a Whirlwind would be pretty clutch uh, with the Emperor. Not using it here, of course, but if you can just I make it with the Emperor. Oh, oh my, my god! god. Wow. 
That's cool. That's a lot. That's a lot of patrons. Yeah, that's a lot of patrons right there. Well, maybe too many. I think you still acolyte, but do you interage an acolyte? This is a lot to think about. Yeah, well, would you, if you do it once, like the only thing you're maybe doing is lowering the health of the void caller. Well, I might consider it if I want to emperor next turn and maximize the value because the zero cost card of emperor isn't necessarily yeah. what you're looking to do. He wants to save him. Yeah, well, I mean, mission oh. of the here is don't die. Yeah, on, yeah. On hype side because his hand is so powerful going from here. He just needs to make sure that he doesn't get blown out by the Warlock deck over the next two turns, and it should be academic for him to win, because, you know, this spider, as long as it stays in play, is actually a liability. I don't know if you realize, like, Void how terror. much power yeah. can, can drop here. You can uh, power overwhelm the... Uh... The Void Caller. Well, the 1-1. Oh, one, one. I might do the 1-1, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would do 1-1 one, one into uh, into whatever Void Caller, into whatever uh, Void Walker, and then Void Terror, both of them. Yeah, and then you get a huge minion plus the M Gang boss. You haven't seen an execute yet, but you're forcing your opponent to have it. So there's probably a good argument to, to make that play. Oh my goodness. This Emperor Thorsten is going to be absolutely insane for Hyped. Wow, he's actually not going with the Void Terror play. Um, I guess he wants to save Power of Whelm in case something uh, like Tharson may come down. Yeah, you know, something like... If Tharson comes down, he can, uh, he can actually play a 2-drop and see Giant and Power of Whelm. Look at this. This is insane. Shield Slam for 0, Slam's now 1. On turn 8, if oh, Hyper Or 1-drop, there we go. Yeah, that's helpful. But on turn seven, patrons can happen. This yeah. is where, this is where like you need to be like a mathematics, uh, you Cause, know, expert. Because there's just a crazy amount of stuff that can happen after patron hit eight cards. Yeah, in this situation, I usually blindly play my turn and hope it works out. Well, that's why they're there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I. Is he skipping? Okay, I thought he was skipping the attack. Okay. So he wants to get the M Gang boss on the board, but then he doesn't get. Okay, but he can't get the Sea Giant now. I'm a little confused by that. Yeah. That must have been a misplay, right? That, that can't have been what he intended. Maybe it is, maybe it is, but. Hmm. I can't imagine. I also don't like Power of Whelm without Void tearing the creature that was Power of Whelm. You could just Power of Whelm the Void. The Void, uh... Do a little bit less damage five, five. and have a way bigger creature. Yeah. Well, here we go. Alright. GG! I... I don't think it's GG, but I don't think Dice will have a minion left at the end of this. Okay. Yeah, there's... Yeah, he has the double inner to be able to trade up into this void seven, character. 7-7 seven, if he wants yeah. it, yeah. Another slam for two, so you can guarantee that it's going to trade up without using two patrons. You can just use uh, the yeah. one. And draw a card, conveniently. There's a battle rate already set up. You know, that's I also pretty I think you have to sweet. whirlwind early, actually. Yeah, the early whirlwind is the correct play, I believe. Because you can't overfill your board of patrons. This gives you three patrons. Yeah, Maybe well, you're going to have a full board two. here. Yeah, this creates room for another one as well by getting rid of one of the ones that's attacked already. Okay. And we, well, he's got to move, as Magni says. That's kind of amusing. He started the he turn... every single creature. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Well, the good news is, Sea Giant is coming in at a discount. <laughs> <laughs> for, for whatever right. that's worth here. Yeah, that's worth a lot. <laughs> oh god. With well, Shadow Flame, right? Like, a topic like Shadow Flame. No, there's no Shadow Flame. Yeah. yeah. Come on, crap. Don't be a Debbie Downer. Somebody will one day play Shadow Flame. Alright, well this is the just play stuff and hope for but the Is best. there lethal with with a frothing? Oh, are you kidding? There, There's like a million <laughs> here. <laughs> oh god. It's not even play stuff, you just like hit phase. I think you actually like... Trade one away? Yeah, you... Oh, Cause, I mean, you would kill the three ones that are there and then spawn three yeah. more, right? Yeah, there's, there's like. Actually, no, they don't, spawn, they don't spawn, do they? Spawn, yeah. Like... That was kind of weird. That was kind of weird. Well, you guys spawn more off of the imp here, along um, with inner age. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever, man. Like you could play this turn in any order, and you would probably have lethal unless you literally escape conceded. 
I mean, you could just play the Frothing Berserker in a rage it twice. You, and could, be you lethal. could just slam a minion if you want, and then uh, shield slam. You could shield slam your War Song and probably won the game anyway. Hype's already getting out of his chair. Before he did a GM lethal. Exactly lethal there. Only four damage on the Frothing. That was pretty cute. Yeah. Yeah. Very GM. Very GM. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Much well. All right. Well, uh, Temple Storm gets their third point. Uh, Hype does get the win with the right. uh, with the Grim Patient. That is pretty nice. We kind of, we kind of expect these decks to get a win every now and then. But uh, honestly, I feel like Grim Patient hasn't been all that consistent these days. Like, um, didn't work for Dog. Didn't work for some other players yeah. uh, in the past series uh, in ATLC. Uh, it's been pretty good overall in, in the finals, but. Um, Still doesn't seem like the dominant deck. Just seems like there's a lot of like super powerful decks, and it really is all about the matchups in the end. Yeah, you, you're seeing a lot of players playing against it who know how to play the matchup against it as mm -hmm. well. You know, they're not putting themselves in a situation where if they can be abused, you know, leaving extra minions on the board with extra toughness or smaller minions yeah. can get run over by patrons as well. Well, I think uh, Tempo Storm is in an incredible position here. Uh, they have Hunter, which is literally the best deck of the tournament. They have Druid, which has been pretty bad in the past, but has received a decent amount of help from TGT. Yeah. So it is, again, a pretty top-tier deck. And uh, while the Mage might be horrible, um, the fact that it's secret means it has a good chance to steal a first win. Yeah, yeah. they can change their deck, though, for tomorrow. So, again, if they want to shuffle mm -hmm. you know, the, the Mage deck, if they if it turns out to work and they don't want it to be predictable in any at any point since players can resubmit, they can always make another Mage deck if they think the class is worth bringing. So you said you think it's Freeze Mage, just... Um, Major she's Joel always, always played Freeze Mage in the tournament yeah. so far, so I think it's a reasonable expectation that we see it again. Even though we haven't seen Freeze Mage from any other team, uh, it still seems like a good deck. Um, it does pretty badly against some decks, but it is great against others, so it's probably just going to get a win, and that's just been the case in the past series and tournaments yeah. as well. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so now we'll probably play the Shaman again. <laughs> I hope so. I hope like I hope RG eventually wins with it because at least if he gets it out of the way, at least we might have a chance to see the rest of the decks. You know, maybe seal the series because it, it looks like the shaman is just a weak spot so far. Well, what's the matchup you're hoping for, with Shaman? Here, are you like uh, the mage? The, the one because... that's left. Uh, if it's freeze mage, druid. it is. It is right. probably yeah, mage. exactly. Um, so it, it was probably druid up. before right. the TGT shift. Now druid's still not that bad, but I'm pretty sure you don't want hunter. Yeah, so you're just trying to corner this as much as possible, maybe waiting till the last moment to bring it back out. Perhaps, perhaps. Yeah. It might be like a, that. Actually, might be a, a a good way for them to get back into this match, doing something like that. Try to maybe corner a deck since you know they have to win with five more at this spot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it it is all about the end um, because it like as we saw yesterday, RDU just couldn't seal the deal with the Shaman deck, even though they were pretty far ahead. Five at five, the start. yeah, they they were ahead, and then they kind of equalized right, the score, and then right. they ended up losing but the last match. The position that Tempo Storm <laughs> put themselves in is just very very clean. There's three good decks and uh, one apiece. It's hard to isolate anything at this stage. So I think Tempo Storm is is got a, a very very solid lead right now, even outside of the scores. Yeah, I don't really know. Like Hype is playing the more typical mid range druid. Um, the zoo from Thais could be an issue, right? Zoo could also beat a hunter deck. It's not impossible. It's gonna, it's gonna be really right. rough. Like it's not likely to, but it's got mm -hmm. you know better than a uh, maybe it's like forty percent as opposed to like the thirty percent. Some people you need to draw out. defender of Argus really yeah, bad. Yeah, I really need to yeah. draw to draw the card. Um, but like the, the secret mage, well, secret mage, the deck we just don't know from Eloise is right. kind of. It, it's throwing everything out of whack, right? Because you have absolutely no clue what it could be. Mm. I felt like, uh, yeah. in general, players kind of knew and expected certain things. I think right now they just expect Freeze Mage. From... And if it happens to not be that, oh well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's just something else, you just adjust accordingly. Because you usually know within the first two turns what the deck is. Right. Mad Scientist on yeah. the coin, and yeah. you're like, what happened here? What is this? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have absolutely no idea. And then it's actually Effigy. Yeah, I mean, that could possibly happen, but... I mean, Dragon Mage would be sweet. I would love to see a Dragon Mage. Not that I think it's great. I think it's worse than Dragon Priest in just about every aspect. Um, but it's a pretty fun deck to watch. I well, just we've, don't we've know already seen Kibler play a bunch of games, so I think the chance of Dragon yeah. Mage are a little bit less. Yeah, it's already proven that it's not really the best. <laughs> yeah. It is fun. It is It is really fun to watch. Yeah. FPG also, I think, is a great tool for the deck. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, most of the people that I talk to, like, you know, about the deck and how they feel it's going to match up against the meta, they tend to say that... It's kind of just a worse dragon deck. You might as well play Dragon Warrior or Dragon mm -hmm. Priest. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dragon Priest has been, you know, 
pretty yeah, good. It's pretty uh, solid. Yeah. yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of it. It's not the most fun deck to play when you're just grinding through ladder. You know, you're playing mm -hmm. for like five hours in a day. It's not the deck I want to be playing mostly, but you can't argue with the results that it's having. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's it's pretty good in ladder, and uh, its counters have oh! not really shown up in the end of the tournament. Like a lot of the slower warlock decks, just absolutely murder it. But we've seen zero of that in the yeah. tournament so far in the finals. Yeah, I'm surprised how little of just any handlock variant we've mm -hmm. seen. Yeah. Right, with the players that have been here. I mean, the Frost Giant Handlock is like dominating the ladder everywhere, right? Uh. <laughs> at, what, at what level are we talking about here? Where, where, uh... Oh, goodness. Someone killing. Oh, it's a Mech Mage. All right. All right. Nothing, uh, nothing unusual there, at least for now. All right. How do you feel about Mech Mage versus Zoo? Oh. This is kind of an old matchup that I haven't seen in quite a while. Well. That's a pretty nice hand from the Mech Mage. Yeah, doesn't get much better for the curve. It does. It goes gets a lot better if you go first. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, in this case, I guess Cogmaster is kind of a sacrificial lamb. I mean, if you see the Voidwalker, do you still throw the Cogmaster, or do you wait? Um, I don't think waiting is part of this deck. <laughs> yeah, you just have to like play your minions right. on curve and okay. hope it all just works out. I mean, yeah. if you try to play this like cute game, you're gonna get bottlenecked on turn four or five, where you can't play your stuff in the way that you want to, and then you know the warlock deck's just gonna run you over from that spot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I almost could see. No, maybe not. I was gonna say like a, a wait on turn two for the coin, but then if you don't have a three draw, if there's a three draw that's picked up, I could see like a different line of play being taken, but it would make uh, less sense probably than a straightforward Drop godmaster player. Wow. Yeah, I think it's gonna be. Oh, uh, that's that's here. definitely a great start for Eloise. Yeah, I think it's going to matter how impactful this Goblin Blast Mage is going to be in this game. I mean, that's, you know, the big payoff, obviously, for Eloise. And if it's if it's good, you know, if he has... I just can put some board states where it's not great for you to play Goblin Blast Mage, but he doesn't have any of those cards just yet. Well, the Abyss of Sarge just counters anything that you do here. Yeah. So it is going to be a bit of a rough start, but Dice doesn't really have much past his start either, so... If Tice gets some bad draws here, I think it'll uh, it'll be a pretty even game. But right now, uh, Tice's hand just counters pretty well. Yeah, if he has the hero power at any point in time on like turn three, uh, it gives so much initiative back to the mage, and they can really start to pull away from the game there. Yeah, it's getting a little bit awkward for Eloise as well because if you don't have a mech on turn four, then you don't have a turn four. I mean, yeah, I mean, a five-four body is generally going to be like okay, okay but yeah. you you want to use its battle cry, obviously. Yeah, its battle cry is basically your win condition against, against Zoo. Zoo. It's kind and of how our health is not winning against any. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Zoo has so many ways to buff up the attack right. as well, so it's kind of like a sacrifice. You're paying four mana to give them, you know, one mana power overwhelming for tempo, and then yeah, it kind of loses. It. Not a bad draw here by the for the Haunted Creeper as well. You know, just another minion that you can get on the board here, which gives them a turn three besides just hero power. Mm -hmm. So, would you ever just ping the Abusive and go turn 3 double Snow Chugger? Mm. It's not bad. Because that way maybe your mech, uh, your Blast Mage is more likely to hit. Wow! Thai is just uh, smoothing out, like, yeah. just smoothing out the curve, top decking a Doom Guard, of course, for the Void Caller. We'll see that. Oh, I'm, I'm hoping for Malganus. Yeah, you gotta believe he's gonna trade in here just to make sure that, you know, Coin Blast Mage doesn't happen. But right. it's still pretty good even on this board. Yeah. Yeah, because you might not be left with anything to trade away. Right. Alright, very good play from Tice. Life tab over Creeper. No way. No, no, no way, yeah. Alright, this is going to be the Creeper. That's a lot of minions to take care oh, of. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, I was going to say, this is a great draw. It's going to let him Spider Tank, and then next turn, she can... Even you know, if he loses the Spider, spider Tank, he can just... still fine, gnome. yeah. Yeah, yeah Class mage, mage, right. Uh oh, pop the that's spider. Enough. Uh -oh. <laughs> that's crazy. Oh my goodness, an 8 8 right Sea now. Giant. Yeah. Uh, this is a hard card for uh, Tempo Mage, I'm sorry, uh, Mech Mage to deal with too. You know, they usually mm -hmm. have to give you two different cards to deal with it in like their yeah. entire turn. No, no, and behind think, two Void Walkers. That is just too much tempo. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't think you're coming back from this. But what about all the hits from the last mage? If they hit all properly, right? Because you're popping the spider here, um, then you're probably going face with the two remaining minions. If the Blast Mage cleans up all the small health ones, could you potentially just swing back in? Uh, Tyson would have to draw a dead for the rest yeah, of the game. Yeah, that's right. You know, if the ever topic's like Doom Guard or that's just over, anything yeah. super impactful, I mean, he's going to have to draw. Yeah, because he's going to have a life tap as well. Right. Yeah. Oh, 
That's something that could finish off the giant if it yeah. ends up attacking into the blast mage. Yeah, that can stem some of the bleeding, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think he'll attack face anyway, right? No, you... yeah, you, you attack the one two and then uh, you drop your blast mage. Here we go. Right, he likes the four to face. The coin clockwork first. All right. What? That was a pretty poor blast mage. Yeah, it was. Now, what I'm wondering is. Why she played the coin like instead like, so aggressively? Instead of playing the blast mage first, seeing where it goes, and maybe then reevaluating. No, no, she no. Made it's like uh, you're still not going to be winning. The only way you're going to start winning is Doctor Boom. So saving a coin for that is fine. You still have a five mana play next turn. She's been accused of playing very conservatively in the past by some people. So maybe. Um... Just trying to make up for it, just going full on aggression. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe she feels the only way she can win this game is if her turn, you know, pans out really well there. Like mm -hmm. Noxious had been saying, you know, just clears all of the small toughness minions, yeah. and they can maybe trade up along with the Frostbolt into the Sea Giant, and then just hope from there that Doctor Boom will eventually clean things up down the line. Yeah, I think it's still possible that she's going to be stabilizing, but yeah, I like the clear play here and Sea Giant face. Yeah, the two one ones being gone would probably be better. Like Force. Um, of course, Eloise just used a 5-4 in a ping to kill this, or a Fireball. It's fireball would be game. devastating, though. Like, a top deck Fireball here would be great for Eloise. Not quite. Can still... I mean, well, do you, like, there's also, I mean, do you ever think about picking off Void Caller here, just because, you know, there's no cards in hand, you know there's no demon coming out? I would go for the Frostbolt, reversing switch my, uh, my 5-4 into a 4-5 and kill the Void Caller. Um, well, you can just, yeah. Okay, you want to kill a giant and just play a spider tank? No, you can just reverse and switch. Yeah, you're reversing Frostbolt switch now. Frostbolt now, yeah. <laughs> On the Void Caller? Yeah, but you don't follow the giant. I guess if you want to get rid of it now. I mean, it leaves you a board if you're facing down... Less, yeah. Yeah, you're facing down less, but you're not getting anything on board, but you do Ooh, get rid of the Void Caller. <laughs> yeah. Nothing really helps here. No. There's, a, there's a good chance Eloise stabilizes. I mean, if if nothing comes down to contest the follow up into Doctor Boom from Eloise, it's just, just you have a poor turn here because you play the coin. Do you go face, or do you make the trade? Because the trade basically mm -hmm. there's a ping on your void caller, which means you basically lose two minions guaranteed. Uh, I don't think you can miss on six. It's like hard to miss on six damage here when yeah. she's going to be able to use pretty much her, yeah her hero power to kill yeah. Well, do you ever just trade in here? That's a weird one. Maybe you try to get some value and... Trump is still back. dancing! Oh yeah, show me the moves, Trump. That's right. Oh yeah, shake that. Okay, that yeah, that's gone. <laughs> oh, there we go. We're back again. That's glorious. Woohoo! I'm not so enthusiastic. You know, you don't like it? I, I think he's getting better. I, I, he improves every time I see him do this. What we're missing here is the, like, the back... There's a lot left to improve. We're missing the back <laughs> of the shirt with Trump face. I mean, the front of the shirt is one thing, but I can't see it from this angle. Alright, well, um, going for the kill on the Void Caller now seems uh, maybe a little risky, but yeah. understandable in some I mean, situations. Yeah, you're at 13. I mean, there's not much you can really play around with here. Yeah, you could always... I mean, could well, you I mean, just let this, it be this there? This means that you snow chugger. Yeah, That's so what this means. you can unstable portal right now. Like, what if you just don't kill a void no, caller? No, unstable portal. You want unstable portal first. Yeah, just in case you get something big and All right. impactful. Yeah, and then you just play you it after dark. Snow no chugger by frost, frost bolting. bolting. Yeah. yeah. Well, Nerubian Egg, that's the Powerbombing target, but I think Eloise is getting a pretty decent foothold on the. Oh, that's a lot of damage. That's nine right now wow, uh, if Thais wants damage. to take it. Yeah, if you if you do Actually, that though, you're kind of sacrificing yeah. your I think you literally egg, just do that because yeah. then your top deck can power overwhelm because you have the egg there right. or Doom the Doom Guard. Right. And you have you have three outs to just win the game. And Off the top deck. you're drawing two a turn. I think that's the play. Yeah, it looks pretty solid to me because I mean the odds that Eloise just picks up a ton. I mean, I know your Tron would really put a dent in your ability to win if you do that though. Like it's a really big all in, but it might be the only play that works. Um, if you all right, keeping the PO. He's gonna hedge a little bit here, which is fine as well. Okay. There we um, go. Clockwork Knight. There's that little guy. Welcome to Asia, where people play Clockwork Knights. I like Clockwork Knight. I think it's great. I play it. Okay. He's not so little either. Uh, another problem. Top deck. Or Doom Guard. Or mm. no, not that one. Still top. I mean, you can kill Doctor Boom with the egg and the implosion, probably. Let's say Doom Guard oh. still lethal. So well, yeah. that's oh. it. There we go. Oh man, the mage fails to take a win, and is this going to be the start of Nylum's comeback? 
Is uh, Eloise's mage what Shaman is to Nihilum? Well, probably not, as Lyco just won with it. Right, but there was no Clockwork Knight. We don't know that. Yeah. Also, on Silver Portal is the most overpowered card in the game, right? Uh, it sometimes it's terrible, yeah. Yeah. but it can, do, it can be game-breaking as well. I mean, it's one of those cards you live by the sword, you die by the sword, you know? Yeah. Actually, last night I had a portal against me and he coined out a junk bot. That's actually really sick in Mech Mage. Which died immediately. <laughs> Which died immediately, okay. You're kind of making this uh, <laughs> anticlimactic. Yeah. I was like, a junk bot, what did he do, Crip? It died immediately. Oh. Yeah, what do you tell the, the story? Alright, right, let's cast what's going on here. This looks really intense. So, Trump right now telling everyone, I run this thing. No one can actually beat me at this game. Yeah. Come on, come on. No, he's just pushing people off the dance floor. Are you sure? Yeah. He's like, Rekful, come play with me. Please, no, please, Rekful, I want to dance with you. He's going to slap Rekful in the face with that as a nunchuck. So he's <laughs> winding it up right now. <laughs> Yep. I can imagine Trump, like Ninja <laughs> Trump, right? And when it made a new emote. Yeah. There we go. All right. Well, uh, that win puts uh, Nylum in a really good position. Um, if uh, RDU wins a game here against yeah. whatever, it actually are exactly tied. Yeah. And I think you go with a Shaman. They're just going to keep throwing it out there. I love it. Um, it's not about logic, right? Because the thing is, eventually you have to win it. And at this stage, there's nothing the you can corner. Why, who are you going to bench, right? No one. Yeah. I mean, against the Mech Mage, the Shaman is like, okay. Oof, I don't against know. Against the Hunter, the Shaman is like, maybe a bit worse than okay. Yeah. And against the Druid, it's like about 50. It just depends on your opening hand almost every time. Yeah. yeah. If you get one of the good aggressive opening hands and they don't have wild growth, you're like a pretty big favorite. Yeah. Well, it's, I think the Darnassus makes uh, some of the biggest impact. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you pop the Neutron a lot more easily with right. your hero power and you can yeah. kill the Neutrons and uh, deny make Warpers. So it's kind of the the problem with the, the Mech Shaman is I guess if you don't play it now, it doesn't really matter. You'll have to play it eventually. And there's always... I mean, you could always make the argument that you want to try to beat your opponent, you know, with more decks to give yourself a morale boost and momentum, but it's a little weird, mm. like, to still have to run with that deck. I'm kind of thinking Gara might play, just because he hasn't played in a while. Um, yeah. And Hunter, it, just whatever, right? I mean, he's, I, from what I remember, he's playing, like, a, a fairly aggressive mid-range Hunter, right? Um, there was, a, I think it was, there was a, bear, or a snake trap and a bear trap in that deck from Gara that mm -hmm. we saw yesterday, so it's on the beast side, um, definitely. And I think it's a great idea to bring that type of deck. It might just be kind of the new mid-range hunter, like, as opposed to playing some of the, maybe just, you know, pure power with shredders and everything. Uh, not that he doesn't play them, but... Yeah, maybe it's what he thinks hunter needs to become to start yeah. with dealing with these paladin decks that are cropping yeah. up, because it, it's definitely seen a drop in its win percentage in the last couple of, you know, like last week or two with TGT coming out. It's becoming less popular, winning a little bit less, which is weird to say about hunter, because it seems just been such a staple in every tournament. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're back to the Kiss the me, baby, here. one more time. Oh, thankfully people are... Go in front of the camera. Yeah, they're coming to see the show. a little bit. The real show. Yeah, yeah, that's the real show. Watching games? Why would I do that? Look, he's not even watching well, the stream anymore. I, I, I he just knows where he's move. That yeah. game is rigged. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was that was a great... You want to go downstairs and play I think Trump? I do, but I, like, I'm casting right now. Uh, you that's get a, a you lame get a, excuse. You get a break at some point, right? You better be seeing if, if he shows up and I'm live on web, the caster cam, I might try to imitate the moves. Mm. But... Mm -hmm. If it's not there, then I won't. You'll that's... get to play the game from up here, but Trump will be the screen for you. Right, right. Yeah. That, that's that's uh, how you do that. I think we should actually have Trump play in front of the monitor while the game is going on. So when he plays his games tomorrow, we actually get like a little bit of dancing going on. Hmm. Maybe they could just like mix up that game with Hearthstone, so you could like you know full screen. Yourself, you have to drag the, the cards. Here. <laughs> get some real exercise playing Patron. Oh yeah. my you, god! You could play insane. Patron back to back games because you'd just be too winded. You'd be yeah. too tired to actually play Patron again. <laughs> you had to play the game with the least amount of moves afterwards. Yeah, so, Hunter. Right? That's yeah, pretty easy. You just do like this. You just like go up. <laughs> you just sit down and raise your arm. Right. Yeah. Pretty simple. Oh. Look at oh, that. Oh, look at that! It's RD Shaman coming out. All right, Gara. Show him who's best. So should we anticipate a pretty quick game here between these two? Well, I think this uh, is... I think Garo just plays a very controlling style. Yeah. Uh, he has, like, the aggressive push that he makes, but he usually does that when he feels like he's cornered rather than just going for the win. Mm. I feel like he's just a pretty safe player with most of his decks. Um, so I don't know if is really going to go for the kill as much as he's going to try to stall the game. And RDU certainly... <laughs> like, RDU plays one way. So. Yeah. Um, there's not even a need to commentate on that. Yeah, he just goes upstairs, and it feels like he's playing, you know, like face hunter almost in the way that you know, mm -hmm. you, just, you yeah. can't ever trade, can't ever do anything like that. 
Yeah. The thing, if you find Doomhammer, I think that's appropriate. The thing is, you're still running into the possibility um, of a Houndmaster against the type of deck Gar is running. And that's a really big uh, stop because you need to find the Earth Shock. Going through against a Hunter, taking say five damage from a Taunt minion is just not something you can afford very often. Yeah, Earth Shock, you know. Very good in that situation, pretty decent against yeah. you know, mad scientists. Mad scientists too, and everything. Depending on his his hand, you might have to... Wait, is that the same Garo we're talking about? Or am I just... I mean, that's, a, that's an interesting look yeah, already used already for already as well. Oh. Looking a bit weird as well. <laughs> I'm liking the stash he's walking. Yeah. It's pretty hot. Alright. Garo is known to run this uh, Argent Horse Rider in his hunt. Wait, did, did we just miss... And I think in this particular matchup, it's actually going to be extremely powerful. Did I just miss what Garo's playing? Wasn't he playing that mid-range... Paladin, uh, Matt Midrange Hunter with Beast. Did I just completely pin him on something different? Or is it maybe um, like a hybrid with Beast? I don't know. I think I think it's like a mid-range Hunter, but he's playing the Argent Horse Riders. And Lepronomes. Lepronomes is a bit weird, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it still works out. Because Earthshock might be baited out of RDU by that, which as a result means that if a taunt comes up, if it's mid-range, of course, um, then that's different. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks like we have a little bit of an issue here with the cameras and stuff, but uh, I mean the game is rolling out, so we might have one perspective for a little while, but uh, it should get pretty exciting pretty quickly here. Really with the Hunter you just want cards that would control the board so the Shaman doesn't get like a critical number of mechs on the board, and uh, right now it seems that is panning out pretty well here. Yeah, Mech Warper, pretty nice card, but unfortunately with the Coin Eagle Horn or the Abusive Sergeant, um, it's going to be very easy for Gar to deal with it. Assuming I'm kind of a fan of the Eagle Horn bow, actually. Yeah, I like that card. I like that play a lot. Um, I see a lot of people play Mad Scientist first because they want to conserve the coin for something else. Uh, there is no conservation measure against the face shaman. But yeah, Me Mech Shaman, you just can't play it slowly. Right. I think uh, in the past the Mech Shaman was heavily favored against Hunter, but now Hunters are playing a lot more freezes. They're playing. Well, the other hand is the Shaman decks are just not running the Fell Reavers, which was basically the win condition. Yeah. So you do that. 8 8. Have fun with that. Oh, hey, it's the Earth Shock. It's the Earth Shock, but I think it's still probably better to just play the Spider Tank. Really? Because you'd be literally sacrificing it to Abusive or like any type of. I mean, Quick Shot could come out as well. I mean, no, Quick Shot would be okay. Quick Shot would be okay. You, right. yeah, you're, you're okay with any of the two for ones here for your Spider yeah. Tank, but abusive really bad into really, Yeah, but Abusive Sergeants are the real payoff you're, you're hoping to avoid here. All right. Oh man, that's an interesting one too. But I think um, yeah, it's hard to pass up Mad Scientist like, Abusive Sergeant here and not lose a Death Rattle from the Lepronome as well in case Earthshock hits later. So yeah, I, I just think you have to be like pretty conservative with your Earthshock. You have to you know play around something like Houndmaster mm -hmm. or something out of an Animal Companion because if he does get a Taunt Minion, it's so much resources for you to get through and so much damage for you have to expend to get to that point that you know if you use your Earthshock in some other way, you could probably lose the game because of that. All right, so your opponent's a hunter. He's at twenty-eight, and you have no minions anymore. Uh, that's a good Earth Shock, though. Really good pickup here by yeah, uh, RDU. Really There's the also the consideration that without Doomhammer, can you really push enough damage to kill this hunter? Doomhammer would do a lot of work, I think. But oh my god! I yeah. actually think the horse rider is pretty good here. It's yeah, definitely, remote. definitely. There's no way RDU is going to kill it unless he has Doomhammer on curve. Well, he, he would just need another Earth Shock if it's not Doomhammer. Oh, but you'd kill the 1 2, right? Unless you want to use the bow. Oh, never mind. Oh, that's also pretty good, right? You keep your entire board by using the weapon to kill so the Cogmaster. I kind of like it just because you know from this stage in the game you're going to deny as many minions as possible. Right. So you get two hounds there. When are you ever getting more than two hounds? Yeah. It's right. never. It never. Literally never. never. Yeah. I mean, RDU's hand in this game is just a delight, isn't it? I think RDU has played six games of base Shaman, or Mech Shaman, whatever we're calling it, and he has drawn exactly 12 Lava Bursts. Yeah, just all of them every game? Right. Yeah. It's, it's the card you want to draw in, like, turn six. You never want it in your opening hand or in the first couple turns. Right. All right, so he's going to get, he thinks, a chance to maybe keep the Flame Tongue, but it's not happening. Yeah, that's definitely not the mid-range hunter I was looking at. Alright, what did I miss? Ooh. Cards has a plethora of options. I was thinking the maybe... Oh, he wants to stay as high up on HP as possible. I like that. How to, uh, the only way you lose here is probably if you go too low and somehow Doomhammer Rockbiters mm -hmm. come out with, with spells. Yeah, I mean, the RDU is, you know, 
not played minions for the last turn besides the flames yeah. and so like you know what his hand you know is you're at like yeah. 12 right you know now. you're at it yeah <laughs> <laughs> you actually have 12 effective health yeah yeah i mean the way this game is played out you know what rdu's hand is exactly yeah. pretty much yeah well i mean you can just i mean you can never expect that two that three two creature to ever attack so oh my god is this real did you just crack with dog rip wow my regrets it was only a three damage investment, I guess. Yeah, if you if you if you look at it that way, it's like a lightning bolt. Yeah, when you but, start when you start looking at plays over the span of the game, that's not one of the ones that actually gets you in any kind of winning position. Well, I mean, it reduces yeah. the hunter from Temple Storm's lineup so that you'll never have to face it again. So maybe then <laughs> you can win. To, to be fair, if if you got a spell damage totem, I'm sure he would point that at face. Oh. Well, that's... Oh, there goes any hopes of attacking. <laughs> oh god, this yeah. is so sad. I'm watching RDU be uh, demolished as a human being. Not even just in a Hearthstone game. Well, you can't play a 3-mana 1-1. One, one. You can kill command your own face, that and you'd be... probably still get away with it. That would yeah. probably be one of the more aggressive Unleash the Hounds ever. Alright. Alright, I don't mind that. I think after you saw your 2-1 dog get crackled, I think you're okay taking a point of damage. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Hello! 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 <laughs> that's the, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's pretty the, much the sound it's gonna make very that's, quickly. That's the correct sound for that one. Well, I mean, Guards has lethal, unless yeah. Lava Burst comes down. So he's got a Lava Burst, the 4-4 Taunt, and play the Anoyatron. But if you Lava Burst the 4-4 Taunt, Guards effectively at 21. Which is two digits. Yeah, it's just which is a lot. Which is a lot of help to go through as Mech Shaman. We've already used up one Crackle to like possibly uh, all your minions you're ever gonna get to attack. So are there any running draws that it's still can almost get? lethal by the way? Yeah. yeah. Are there any running draws that RDU can get here to even be in this game? Like does it have to be like Doom Hammer into something and then you know it's Doom Hammer is way too late. He has to draw it on turn five. Basically at least. right now we are playing the game. Hopefully, Gara disconnects and we have a regain. game. <laughs> That's possible. Which is an okay game to play. Yeah, if, I'm okay uh, with that. If you're playing for this much money. Alright. It looks like uh, Temple Storm will end up with... Oh, the disconnect can't even happen anymore. No? Why? Because, uh... There's lethal on board for Gara unless he gets to talk to him. What if you rope, like, really hard? And there's actually a DC. No, it's, it's lethal. There's, there's absolutely no way Gara can can do anything. Okay. I mean, RDU. RDU, yeah. yeah. Temple Storm does have twice the points of Nihilum, and not two to one, four to two, right? It's a little yeah, bit more it's meaningful. Four to two. Uh, right now we have the Mech Mage, and we have uh, yeah. What is it? It's it's the Druid. From to hype, yeah. Hype still has his Druid to go through. Still me. some pretty okay matchups yeah. for the Shaman, but. It's got to win a game right here, and he's got to be yeah, pretty demoralized. There's like this a few point. other decks that yeah. Nylum has to take wins with as well. Yeah, I mean, it's looking pretty rough here. Uh, this Shaman has just not looked good in any game, as you said, and you have to win a game with it. And yeah. how demoralized are you at this point? Is he 06 with it? Is that what you said now? I think he might be 07 well, now. He if, won, he went, he I lost he, five yesterday, right? No, he lost four yesterday, so okay. he's 06 with it. Really, the, the interesting part, the way the tournament is set up, it is a little bit forgiving. Because, like, if you lose here, you don't have a chance to be the second seed. But that's okay. Like, yeah. you could just, like, the third and fourth place are the same when it comes to tomorrow's absolute finals. And tomorrow, you get to change your decks. Mm -hmm. Now, if we see Mech Shaman tomorrow, that will be a surprise. Yeah, yeah. the way it's performed, you get a right. it's the first thing on the chopping block. Yeah, I'd yeah. be very surprised if Nihilum brings that again. And if they don't bring Hunter as well, right? Mech Shaman instead of Hunter. Right. right. Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, I you gotta keep that can, in mind. Yeah, I don't know if you can actually justify that anymore with the way these games have been playing out. Yeah. I don't know. It's it seemed optimistic. It seemed optimistic. Even at the end of TGT, um, it was still at the beginning of TGT. Sorry, when the decklists were still very akin to that of pre TGT, mm -hmm. it was still a little weird to bring Mech Shaman over Hunter, but um, it did it did pay out pretty well. Yeah, the thing is, Thais was also telling me this. You know, he's not a Hunter player, and when Life Coach and RDU agree that Hunter's not necessarily worth bringing, or that Mech Shaman or another tag that they brought might be better, mm -hmm. um, you know, they kind of agreed on it. So it's not like RDU pulled off some crazy switch. And was like, you know what? Right. I don't want to play this Hunter deck. I'm just gonna bring Mech Shaman. Well, um, as a team, they probably decided to pick Mech Shaman. I agree with that. Yeah. 
That is a team that probably decide to replace Max Shaman. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. Who yeah. do you replace it with? Do you like? I think Hunter is just easy. Like Hunter has literally never been bad in this tournament. Yeah. In probably any tournament. Yeah. Do you think there's a chance we see something new, like maybe a rogue deck come up? Um, From it's Martin? possible if if there probably not with rogue, but there is some chance a new deck will rise. Uh, this is absolutely the time where you would like switch into that gear to maybe have some kind of wild surprise factor when it's really on the line when everything is on the line. Um, but yeah. uh, we'll see. We'll there's, see. There's a counterpoint to it's that. It's very where... difficult to actually come up with a deck that competes with the existing decks. Yeah. Yep. You would know. Me, me, yeah, I, I know. I, I absolutely <laughs> tries, know that. I've tried the so stupidest yeah. stuff in the universe yeah. and tried to like find a, something. But... Yeah. Sometimes Every... stuff works, yeah. but um, it usually works because the surprise factor is part of the strength of the deck. Yeah. So it doesn't. It doesn't. A new deck doesn't necessarily need to be as good as the other decks. It just needs to be almost as good. It reminds me of uh, Purple Drang playing the um, Axe Flinger. Like, it looks like Patron, it plays like Patron, and then he goes Axe Flinger, Axe Flinger, and he just rampages them after a whirlwind, and then he bouncing blades and you're dead. It's like the stupid. Or it could just be patron. Right, it could be patron, but, patron, but yeah, it's yeah. like it's just pretty amusing to watch. So like the surprise yeah, factor would be there. If you play a combo deck with the same win condition as yeah. patron, with the cards that literally replace patron for the exact same purpose, it's not like it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't offer a competitive advantage. Right, it just offers like a fun factor, I guess. And it looks like RDU is going to be uh, thrown right back into the fire again here, for Shaman. Oh, man. And he's going to get benched, so that means. Uh, well, yeah, he hasn't lost yet. Yeah, lost yet. Yeah, 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 lost yet. All right, Sorry. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> I, I can see why you would think he's going to get benched. <laughs> uh, so I think the mage overall though has a much better matchup against the shaman. The shaman does against the mage. Mm -hmm. I think um, both decks have serious consistency problems. So yeah. I, this is literally like. Uh, I think one out of five times the shaman just automatically wins because it gets a good hand. The mage doesn't get a good hand, so <laughs> the odds are okay. All right, let's take. They it seem better way. than they've been. Yeah, I, I think I think RDU shaman literally doesn't have too bad of a matchup anymore because like all the decks he's facing, the mage and the druid, both have consistency issues. And he gets an okay hand against the bad hand from his opponent. He literally automatically wins. Yeah, if he wins here, this could be the start of like a comeback here for their team. Right. You know, they're not out of it yet. Yeah, right. it would be like four to three. So really, it's three more decks versus two more decks. Yeah. So it's definitely possible. We've seen it happen before. Uh, we've seen crazier things that actually happen before. I mean, it is pretty important that they win this match here, though. This this exact game. Uh, yeah. I mean, the druid hypes druid is not really that consistent of a class, but is more consistent these days. And like Nylum has two points, I believe. It it have to lose yeah. four in a row. That's that's pretty unlikely. Yeah, we saw some bad draws from it. Uh, I, I think of Dog yesterday. Just Actually, like, he did lose yeah. four in a row with that. Right. Draw. He has some unbelievably bad draws. But Dog, I think, had a few more tech choices than all the other Druid decks in the tournament, right. which kind of increased the likelihood of that. Yeah, yeah. and so you, you, you can't... You can't hope for that. That's not something a position you want to be in. You're like, I don't well, think that really ever happens. Yeah, you're like, I hope the druid draws badly for four games in a row. You know, yeah. I hope they never have wild growth or Darnassus. Yeah, or Darnassus or Innervate. or Innervate. Yeah, or yeah. relevant creatures. That's a lot to ask for for four games in a row. Right. Right. Their opening hand is just always Ancient of War, Ancient of War, Ancient of War. Like, oh no, game. it was worse than that. Yeah, yeah it was actually Do worse. Than Dogs that. was like uh, swipe, swipe, wrath, and like, and yeah, like some... wrath, yeah, and like Innervate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, one of his plays was. He had the option to enter a swipe to the face. That was his didn't, only he play. Win, didn't he win that game though? Mm -hmm. I think he won that game. Was that the one cleared, game? I think that's no, the one he won Isn't against the game the that patron. He, he cleared against patron and then just like drew dead again for like oh, two or three more turns. Okay. Because know. he had the turn where he got to like swipe into wrath and to innervate his hero power to take down the patron board. All right. Well, it's a mech battle and the mage is in good shape here. Yeah. The clockwork knight's also really difficult to handle just because it buffs a mech already existing on the board. I think on turn five. The shaman is in a situation where it doesn't really care about the board state. Yeah, that, say, that yeah. early. Well, yeah, well, they're, they're hoping to have well, like, gotten you low. The, the lava burst right? count is at thirteen now. All right. Or you just need to keep a running tally for the rest of the tournament. That just it's, to see it's if... going to be the next card draw. Like it's guaranteed. Oh, for sure. Yeah. If it is, then there's something really. It's worse than fire war act at this stage. <laughs> it is worse than fire war. <laughs> yeah. At this point, it actually has been for RTU. That's definitely true. Um, and it does a lot less too, right? I can see the lava burst in RDU's eyes. <laughs> it's just lava burst and regret. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Self-loathing for bringing shaman.
All right. Well, these are the two remote players. And the coin power may is pretty sweet because you can weave it in with Spider Tank as a follow up play and get a four five. Okay. Um, like next turn, of course, but not. not I yet. don't know why he's thinking. There's, in, like, I guess he's thinking about his future turns. What about a Noyotron? I mean, you would still Lightning Bolt this turn, right? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, indeed. That has some stopping power. Yeah, the Power Mace is actually not going to be able to attack the second time against a Spider Tank. So maybe a Lightning Bolt would be to be con uh, would be considered. Ooh, here. Lightning Bolt is pretty nice here. I like the uh, the Lightning Bolt Mech Warper play. Unless he goes for a turn three Mech Warper Bolt and then Spider Tank as a follow up. Yeah, does that actually set him up better? Yeah. The gun line? I think it might, depending on whether or not a three drop comes out here for Eloise. That's not quite it. Now, would you be afraid of the Blast Mage to the point where you would bolt the Clockwork Gnome instead? Ever? Well, I mean, it does yeah. take a lot. It takes, take you're, you're scared of more things than that. Yeah, there's so many things that are dangerous here. The the Tinker Town was probably a bit worse than the Clockwork Gnome as well. So it could be Tinker Town, it could be uh, Goblin Blast Mage. Yeah, that's actually an insane draw from oh, RDU. Draw. Like, the Earth Shock with the Mech Warper just sets him up perfectly. And there is no Mech for Eloise, the follow up, to kill the Mech Warper with the Cogmaster. Oh my god. Could yeah. this be the game? That he finally gets over the hump. This is actually the game where you might want to draw a second lava burst. And he's not gonna find it. <laughs> <laughs> the one time he actually needs the lava burst, it's just not there. Yeah, maybe. We heard your pleas, we left them at the bottom of the deck. Okay. And then it never shows up. Alright, well we know the correct play, but it is hard to see this. I mean, if, if you do run up against the, another mech, this play uh, doesn't work so well. I mean, against a Shredder, it would probably be yeah, yeah, Shredder, okay. It's still okay, you're right. You play a spider right. tank you afterwards, can, you can just right? kill out your weapon. Yeah. Also, the, the spare part being denied removes a huge variance component to the match, mm -hmm. where sometimes you just don't know what's going to happen, and one of your minions gets frozen, and then you're out of it, because yeah. they get a crazy tempo Also, it turn. could just be an attack spare part or a right, swap, right. and you could just lose your mech warper. Exactly. Or he's not going to play the mech warper here, just fearing you know another mech coming out of okay. Eloise's deck and just getting punished. I can agree with that. Oh, I think it makes is. sense. Uh, and he's going to be able to kill it with the power mace as well, so that's another thing to note. He's going to be getting a crazy mech warper spider tank, kill the mech warper turn, if Eloise decides to play it now, and considering the phase damage... I think the Goblin Blast Mage is just way better here. Even as a 5-4 like, baseline? Yeah, I, because you deny a good attack from the weapon, and you know the Shaman has to push now. Makes sense. Yeah, a just, lot of sense. You just pick off the 1-1 here as well, to protect your guy a little bit here, so there's... You know, already has to use something other than just the weapon here to take care of your Blast Mage. That's pretty oh, that's, convenient. That's because, uh, I mean, with Rock, with Doomhammer in your deck, you might feel a little uh, queasy, I guess, about doing this, but... Well, he's gonna cry. It's, this is three, he loses the game, I believe. Well, here's the problem, too. If this is three, his aggression is gone. Yeah. Elo well, I mean, is still at 30, so he has to get something going at some yeah. point in time here. I think he has to crackle, but if he gets three, he loses. Uh, no, not really, because he, he can he play... He won't be able to win. He can play Mech Warper and kill the 5-4 uh, the, the and then have a 4-5. He could still stay into it. It's just that he's going to take five more phase damage than he wants. No, the 5 would just kill the Mech Warper. No, he would attack into it with the weapon after crackling it and missing. Oh, if it fails? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. I think it's a decent plan. 75% of I the agree. time you win. I agree, you're right. Yeah. Oh, man. Drum roll. It just seems like every game RDU has to go through these insane hoops or these complicated turns just to have a board. Chance. Yeah, just to have a chance to win. Oh, my God, it's not three. What happened here? Wow. Nice job, RDU. Now your draw will be bad for the rest of the game. I apologize for this, but we must uh, equalize. Um. Wow, that's pretty sweet for RDU, though. I think just Clockwork Knight here. Yeah, this seems like the only play that Eloise can make, and RDU is going to be able to deal Finally, with it perfectly. Finally, Burst is also not terrible. Yeah, I think this is going to be the game. <laughs> yeah. You might see the Mech Shaman get off the snide here. Yeah, just... Whoa. Whoa five what? damage into five... Wow. That, that's Lava good. Burst. It's done something. We're no longer yeah. cackling one two, a two ones here. Yeah. Crackling a two one hound. Oh man, the highlight of the, uh, of the, of the day, I guess. Whoa. Whoa. Hello. Yeah, that's, that... that's interesting. It's not interesting right now. It's interesting when the Doomhammer comes down. It's I mean, interesting. You pass up on playing at the turn, though, is just such a good curve. I mean, like, you have to. A poison Blade for the Mage and Doomhammer for the Shaman, right? What? What did. Sort of justice for yeah. the mage. And a 1-3. What is a 1-3?
Um, it's probably gonna be the Cogmaster's Wrench. Oh yeah. yeah there oh it is. wow! It is. Wow! Whoa! That's pretty convenient if you're already use shoes right now. He just got nine damage for free. He didn't. He didn't even need that second lava burst. Yeah. Sometimes fortunate. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna be able to develop a little bit of a core here too. Hopefully, getting this rolling up and then here live, comes yeah. the flame strike. Oh god. Is there room for flame strike in the deck with a blink prawn? Some and all these people weapons? have done it, but I don't think this deck can even like find room for it. It would be hilarious though. I would probably cry for RDU. Alright, well, is she dead? Um with Rock Biter on the well, well he's Apple one short Rider? plus eight yeah. plus three. He's one short. One, one off yeah, right. yeah, but there's no like he could pick it up off the top. That deck has a huge top deck potential. A lava burst. Yeah. A lava burst. <laughs> Let's yeah. make this the story. Let's do this. Now, how does Eloise even is there a play that keeps her in this game over the next two turns? Uh, so is there a board she set up where she can at least threaten lethal? I mean, she can't even lose a shredder that easily because it'll really. be buffed. Because like, there's no shredder save. She she can even attack into the uh um, Neutron and kill it, right? And kill it, yeah. She can kill the Neutron basically. That she sounds like for some lethal the next turn. What does Medivh even say when he attacks? Um Yeah, you don't know either. I Okay. That's gonna be game. That is That's it. gonna be game. Are the you the smile. So unless he screws it up. Is, is he screwed up? He attacks first. Yeah. Forgets, to, <laughs> <laughs> forgets to rock bite. Alright, now oh, he's got it. He's got it. Oh my god. What a relief if you're RDU here. Yeah. The mouse lags and he, he, he just has to reconnect it. He comes back. I don't know that the mouse just goes into the shredder. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Doomsayer spawns. Yeah. There we go. So everything's forgiven now, right? You just, you just throw away the six games before this one? Well, yeah. Well, our, the uh, Nylon's team is always a little bit behind, mm -hmm. but really we weighed in the fact that the Shaman had such difficulty closing out a game in the past. I mean, it did take six games, six losses before it right. won the seventh time. Yeah, somebody wants to and, dedicate a stream for Trum dancing. Uh, I don't know. You don't? Okay. And uh, I think I think really the only thing that changed is it didn't draw two Lava Bursts. Yeah, I mean, he the fact that it was another two. creature replacing the Lava Burst helped a lot. Yeah, so apparently that's the that's the key for that matchup. You, you only need one. If you draw two, you can't win anymore. So maybe or zero. So maybe or zero, just play yeah. only one in the deck. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes sometimes your creatures just melt away and you never win the game at all. And yeah, that's a lot kind of bursts of, uh... give you some way to win with Doomhammer and Rockbiter. And you're basically playing Malagos Shaman without Malagos <laughs> at that stage. Yeah, but it much. does win games. and so We've seen that happen a few times. Well, Skaka's done it a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, playing the control game until he finds the top deck. Yeah. Just drags it on uh, as long as he can. And then... But, uh, I mean, right now, now it's really only behind one game. Yeah, they're actually, they've got a good chance to swing back and in. And is Eloise benched? Um, is that two mage? No, I don't think so. I think Gagara played a hunter prior to that, yeah. so there's no uh, there's no bench for Eloise. Okay, okay. That was a big win there, though, for them. You know, getting them yeah. to, not just getting off. They're the only a little bit behind yeah. now. Now they're only a little, little behind. Yeah, and they don't have to run Shaman ever again. It's yeah. it's off the table. Ever it's again, yeah. ever. Because yeah, they ever. might not tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a pretty aggressive Paladin deck. I think that's actually going to probably beat both of those decks. I'd venture to say so. And yeah. the Patron is. Fairly favored against. Uh, actually, no, it's not. Is it? No, the druid and the mage probably kill the patron. Uh, the patron has some pretty yeah. mediocre matchup. But the thing is, when the patron has a bad matchup, it's like a forty-five percent. Yeah, bad it's matchup. still like right, a fifth. Right, right, yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. It's like it's not an actual favorite. It's not right. Like it's a bad matchup. Right. right. And the druid's a druid. I'd actually wager Tyson's druid against any yeah. other druid. Yeah. If anybody plays druid, if you ask me to pull it, to pick one player to bring druid to my uh, my mm -hmm. lineup, it's probably Thais. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, now I'm still a little bit behind, but it's. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. What would you lead off with here? Pally. Pally's on the nylon side? Yeah. Um, I think the Pally just doesn't have yeah. a bad matchup. And if Eloise decides to play Mage, maybe you can target the Druid with your Druid. Because Thais is a superior Druid, of course, right? <laughs> oh, but then but then it would only be on bench. It wouldn't matter what you queue into. Yeah. No, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Okay. I'd go for the Paladin motivational boost. Yeah, I actually was like thinking the same thing as not Give, give him a like mentor as well. Yeah. yeah. Give RDU a little bit of a, a, a pickup, like, I guess, for tomorrow. Yeah, it's also like one of the decks left that can just get some free wins like that in Druid, just have some draws that are like very impossible for other people to beat. Mm -hmm. And you can just have Patron in your back pocket with Life Coach. 
you know, he's been doing a lot of work with that deck lately. So you can kind of have that as like your fallback if, you know, you have to win a couple games here at the end. So I don't know how the current mech mage list, especially with Blinktron, really does against uh, Tysa's Druid. Um, just me not knowing that might affect some of the some of the matches here. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll get to know. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna find this out right now. It's kind of a it's kind of it's, a it's good weird, question. Right? Like you yeah. don't know. Well, if, if the Blinktron gives you some extra reach, yeah, it but really it, does, does. it doesn't work in the later stages of the game because. Um, You're dead. Like, yeah. Yeah, you die. It's like, oh, so I'm at 14, and then it gave my opponent a four, you know, four damage weapon. Yeah, or something. it lets like, Savage or do a lot more damage yeah, to exactly. your combo. They Especially get a ton more reach. Right? Yeah. Plus, Plus, I mean, they can use it against you to start clearing your board as well. I've actually, I've actually seen that. I've seen Savagery Druid yeah, with Blinktron. Blinktron and gave bite. the opponent a Doomhammer, and he was playing like Bite. Yeah, that's cool. Oh wow, <laughs> that's the story of my life. Yeah, that's what I do. That so one time, yeah. The, the one time it happens out of like the thousands of games. You'll yeah. see people do that, like at Legend, once they right. have nothing to lose, they'll just switch to like that wonky Blinktron Druid, mm -hmm. and then they play Pirates just because they can, and they just attack with them. It's pretty cool to you see. You played Pirate Mage. Yeah, like, and it I worked. I, I won so many games. It was like super good. Echo of Medivh, the ship's cannons. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Define <laughs> super good. It won two games out of like seventeen. Okay, that's pretty good. That's that's higher for than Pirate Mage. It's pretty sweet. That's that's actually worse than I'd expect. I think you just win games from just curving out your opponent more than that. No, it's not a curve. It was the Echo Medivh combo, like quad ships cannon. So you can't curve out your opponent. Oh, you're deck. actually just trying to combo with the pirates. You don't you don't play the pirates first. Like it's like the the Murlocs, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, you can't Murloc people down one at a time. Yeah, you can. Maybe if you play Warlock, you it can. It starts with the first hero Murloc. Sometimes the Murloc Knight. Yeah, but it's like turn four. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can have you can have this guy in any deck. It's a Murloc deck. Well, we're really off topic right now. Is there even a topic? We're, I was waiting for a game, so like I'm making a topic up. So. Um. Well, yeah, the, the game that's coming up is gonna. I, I mean, we saw the screen. I'm I'm assuming yeah. we're locked in basically. Yeah, maybe we have some connectivity issues. You know, mm -hmm. with the the remote client going right. On. Shaman one shut down the servers. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it is going to be Tysa's Druid, which I think is playing a very standard right. Druid list. I don't even remember if I saw Darnassus in his list. Yeah, I He think... might just be playing the Druid he's playing like a year and a half ago. Which is still fine. I mean, that deck's been great since the inception yeah. of Hearthstone. Exactly. I mean, I think Druid has, is the class that has changed the least over the span of competitive play in Hearthstone. I mean, you're still playing almost the exact same list you were. Like, this creature might be slightly more annoying right. than the last one, so I could play this, maybe have it stick and force nature calm my opponent instead of 14 for 20. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. The moment they add like a good uh, five drop that mm -hmm. actually sticks, you might see that you know be swapped. Well, they, they didn't even try the spectral knights. That was a thing, but that yeah. was mostly to counter because there were a lot Miracle of spell-based rogue. rogues yeah. at the time. Yeah. So you, you just do a turn one spectral knight, they would just leave the game on the spot. Yeah, they didn't even bother with it because like you can't sap blade story yeah. like seventeen turns later. Yeah, by the uh, time you do anything, you just yeah. die to that one card. In HPL, Kranich was actually running uh, spectral knight in his druid decks okay. and just kept queuing into patron, and it was just like he would just play it on like turn three. Yeah, what is execute? Never kill it. Yeah, <laughs> what is execute? It. It's like it's crazy. All right. Well, it's, it's only twelve to the face with fiery war axe. Man, it's only twelve for like. You know, turn three play, that's... Still pretty good. Yeah. You, you'll yeah, have to get a little the, bit more. But the patron can often combo sooner than the druid, so... That's right, that's right. It doesn't sound as, yeah. as rough as the rogues had it. That's yeah, well, speaking of rough, uh, that's going to be rough for Thais to handle. A curve like this from Eloise against the druid is going to be pretty difficult to, to remove from the board. Well, no, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, maybe three, not that difficult. Three druid player confirmed? Thais, I, I don't think I've seen him play without a wild growth or innervate in a starting hand ever. Well, you might have to keep this whole hand because if you if you keep wild growth and innervate, which you probably should, um, you yeah. might just run out of cards if you don't draw cards that are relevant. Right. Yeah. If you like mulligan Azure Drake and then draw something that doesn't do anything, you're you're just oh losing game on the spot. He kept it. No, but the mage hand just got better. Yeah. There's a mech warper in there now. Balance detected. Yeah. You have a really good mech voice. You have a really good impersonation <laughs> of it. Wow, really a good impression. Oh, that's a pretty decent top deck though for Ties. I still like the Wild Drake. You can afford to take. Yeah, yeah, damage. probably because you can always keep her afterwards and then curve into the Drake very Honestly, nicely. You can just force a nature next turn if you yeah. want. Yeah, do that. Wipe the board. Yeah. Well, if you innervate out keeper here, you can kind of control the board a little bit, and then you can Wild Growth into Azure Drake over the next two turns. What about Spider Tank though? Is... Right, that's the worry you have. Coin yeah. Spider Tank would really throw you out of the game for yeah. at least a few turns. I think because you have the the insurance or the 
perceived insurance from the force of nature. Uh, you can't. You can just afford a wild growth. If you can ever afford a wild growth against the cog master, this is it. Yeah, I think that's I a really agree. good point. Yeah, but you can just hold on to the innervate as well. I mean, you don't have to get super value from it on turns one, two, or three. I mean, if you right. just get in the turn, where you get to do two different things on turn six. Mm -hmm. You can get super far ahead. But we just saw the what happens when you deny every mech off the board. Like yeah. nothing happens. That's really. generally the way to beat the uh, the mage mech decks. If you, if you can get those kind of draws against them, they have a really hard time functioning. And here we probably just see Keeper on the Cogmaster. Uh, if Eloise picks up a Tinkertown Technician, though, that's going to put Thais in a bit of an awkward spot. Honestly, if she, if she just picks up anything, she's in good shape. Yeah, but, any three drop. Um, I don't know how likely that is. Uh, there's a lot of two, at least there's a lot of two drops, so it's possible that we see a Snow Trigger even. That would be a kind of drop? okay. Ooh, I think a one drop would be better than a two drop because you, can, the kill, you okay. can kill the Keeper. Uh, like that. There you go. Yeah. Actually, Snow Trigger would be a one drop because of that. Of that would yeah, it would have been better because right. yeah. you could actually like play it for one and then ping the, the two four. All right, test your swipe. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tysol has you know two force of natures here, so it's not like he's gonna like mm -hmm. completely lose control of the board. Yeah. As this game goes on, he's gonna be able to use them as removal spells. I think you you probably just get that creature off the board. Um, I mean, the thing is, if you if you do nothing, you lose the swipe. If you trade, you lose the swipe. So you might as well remove the creature right. and then lose the swipe. As opposed yeah. to letting a 2-3 live. Yeah. Well, one of the board right. states is way better than the other one. One has a keeper of the grove and one does not. Right. Oh, hey. Another keeper. Um, I don't know if it's if it's really ready, though. I think here you might just uh, want to force. So you'd innervate force just to clear up all the mechs, the blast mages, and deal extra damage? I don't know. If you innervate force, it, it takes away like a goblin blast mage play. Yeah, it takes well, away potentially a lot of plays. Yeah, it takes away a lot of plays, but then your next turn you're you're doing your price into just keeper hero power. That that's it. Like this is such a strong card for dice. Yeah, but Eloise is getting in that damage. Yeah, but a swipe takes care of the blast mage and everything else. Now, now here's the thing. Go ahead. Well, do blast you, mage might take around? care of the drake. Do you play around swipe anymore if you're Eloise? Because he didn't do it last turn. Not here. Not after hitting the Drake for oh, that's only, true. only well, you, you get you, you get two draws. Yeah. I I I think this is pretty good. I mean, we know it's good, but um I think just because you get two draws it's, it's worth it. Yeah. So at least is pondering whether or not the swipe would be a problem that badly. She or... plays around it pretty well here to make sure that she can have a minion left over. Yeah. Tice, uh, good good pick up here for the follow up after swipe. And he cleans the board up completely. If Eloise doesn't find a minion to curve with the mech warper, um, it could be a little tricky. He's going to keep the swipe for a better time. Uh, I think the swipe keeper is stronger than the. Uh... Oh, you can't swipe keeper. But you can, you can yeah. You can go for it and use the innervate and then you go for Ancient of War turn seven. Um, what do you expect That's on really five? Aggressive play. I don't think you need to do that. No, I, I think I think this force play is just better. Yeah, so, I actually like force of nature here a lot. Does it have to do with the fact that you might run into a clockwork knight, which is a five five that's hard to remove, and then swipe is kept for that? No, I just think you have two forces, and you want your other cards to be flexible. Okay. It's rare that you actually even get a good chance to play force of nature without killing your opponent. Yeah, he's getting some value out of the second force of nature here. I, mm -hmm. I like to play a lot. All right. Well, uh, here you really can't do too much as the mage. Um, just drop the mech warper. Whatever. Mm. You can drop it twice if you want. That's fine. Yeah, that's actually really good. Well, no, it's not. It's, what it's about, amazing. What about just playing Goblin Blast Mage, kind of like just as a tempo five four? Because you still have a time rewinder in your hand mm. if a situation ever comes up. Oh, but I right. like just getting five power in play. You yeah. know. Well, she does like that. Oh, well. oh wow! Pretty good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it always comes down on, on turn seven. Like it's it's always drawn, right? Oh, well. Mm. You yeah, kind of have to fireball ping, right? Well, yeah. If you fireball hero power, you can like hope to God there's a there's a good board for you to do your own Doctor Boom on right. next turn. But there aren't many. That I think. Happen. Yeah, I think you just fireball ping. And hope, like, the 1 in 10 chance that your Goblin Blast Mage survives the onslaught of Boombots. Yeah, they just, like, both go to face for a few, and you... That's really 1 out of 4. It's not that unlikely. Yeah, it's, like, old Murkai likely. It's better than the chances of any other play being made of winning this right. game. Mm, okay. 
Yeah, I guess you double trade and you just see where they go and keep it the growth might. I mean, we'll finish it off no matter yeah. what. If, if, if they if the boomers really suck, you always do have the keeper. Yeah. Okay, backup plan. Oh, well. That's one now, does this ever change your play here when the first boom bot does this? Uh, you might keep her hero power to Nasus Aspirant. Or not. He's going to try to have the big turn here. Oh, wow. I mean, you can still go hero that, power, that innervate, Ancient of War, though, you know? Yeah, you innervate hero power to kill this, yeah, and this I think you're still, you're still good. A lot more phase damage though, so it's kind of worrisome against. Yeah, them. but you did just see a fireball. You saw a fireball, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is gonna guarantee get in some damage here, and you already have a swipe and another force of nature in your hand, so you have like ten to twelve burst damage if you keep her grow. So you're only trying to getting a little bit more damage for the rest of the game. All right, well, I think it's Doctor Boom time still. Yeah. There we go. Now Eloise will test her luck with the boom bots. Wow, that's a nice card. You can always heal up the Ancient War after it attacked into boom. Oh, but no, then you I, can't I think, swipe. I think this is a really clear play. I think you draw cards, play Darnassus, and hope to get a Savage Roar from your draws. Yeah, and just push five, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And if the boom bots aren't lucky, you just win. It's just game. The only thing you would lose to, I guess, like a reversing switch on your Ancient of War, where they just then kill it with Brawl's Bolt, double Boombot, hit face, or like some some kind of play along those lines. I don't know. What is he thinking of doing? Like silencing where the Boombot, so the damage doesn't go through, and maybe the Ancient of War is more likely to live. Because, um, I mean, the Boombot would have to hit that one target well, for if, three. If Eloise wants to kill the Ancient of War, she can kill the Ancient of War. What? Yeah, um, just silence and swipe and... Not quite anymore, though. No. I don't know. Ooh. Oh, now, face, now she's got some... He's a little worried about his life zone not being at 10, because, you know, maybe there's some outs here, Frostbolt plus yeah. Fireball, but she already has expended one Fireball from her deck. Mm -hmm. There's no way Thais isn't healing with Ancient Lore, right? I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's not, because he doesn't see the burst, but he's really worried. You can tell in his face that he's just hoping this is a board he can handle and not some kind of burst from hand. Uh, I don't think he's going to heal. I think he has to use Force of Nature to clear. Yeah. If he's really worried, you'd use Force of Nature to clear. Right, right, right. In this case. But, like, the uh, the follow-up play is well, going to involve... Uh... She's down to one card in her hand now. He knows it's a it's a spare, spare part. part. So he, he knows there's no... He just has to left. beat what he sees now. Yeah. yeah. So Force of Nature Shredder is a definitely good turn unless you really want to armor up. But I think you don't have to. Shredder is so much better at controlling the board afterwards. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, this is a really bad card. It's gonna be a uh, rough time. All right. It's fine. It's Manageable. Bad. Looks like he wants to kill uh, the Mech Warper, probably. Yeah, the armor up is actually gonna allow him to do pretty much everything he wants. Do you really have to kill the Mech Warper? Snow Trigger almost looks more threatening at this stage. And you want to be able to but attack you wanna... the next turn. Yeah. You want Snow Trigger to have to run to your taunt creature. Plus, okay. he, he can't die to any top deck from Eloise here. He can heal up with Ancient of Lore. This pretty much like seals it up for him. Mm -hmm. Blinktron wouldn't kill you right away. Um... Hmm. Okay. Actually, wait. There was a lethal option there, wasn't there? Goblin Blast Mage return. Goblin Blast Mage. Perfect oh. pings. Right. Yeah. I guess it was that. Yeah. Six, well, he no, would have to hit for lethal. yeah one off one lethal off. with perfect pings, definitely. Still playing the defensive game because he can't get the the full board. Well, he's he's dropped his combo options now. Yeah. And now with the shredder, it's actually a pretty big threat. Wow, he's got no way to kill what comes out of this shredder, well, unless he finds a formation of lore. But then that means you're not healing. So he's gonna try to find one from the excess mana. I I can agree with that. I think it's. Probably the best way to ensure they can clear the board. Pick up like a wrath or a swipe, yeah, and he does find a swipe here. That's pretty good. What's the worst? Millhouse Mana Swarm? I mean, it's the same thing as a 4-3. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> it yeah. was in the center. Rewarded. Yeah. It was perfectly placed. Oh, okay, yeah, wait. What needs to come out of oh, this? Oh, wow. Actually, actually, if he doesn't kill it, she can time rewind it. It's actually good. 
how 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 good is that? Oh! Oh, 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 there is a bounce here. Leroy Jenkins can win this game. Any charger wins the game because you can rewind it. Oh goodness! Any charger won that game. Yeah. Right? That could have been such a except heavy Boar. Boar would have gotten to yeah. one. Bo yeah. yeah. That that could have been so insane. I'm surprised I didn't trade just because you know the only way he loses is if something crazy like this happens, mm -hmm. right? Maybe Archmage Antonius would have been an issue with a spare part. Um, that could have been another worry of his. But then does pushing damage really like damage really speed it up? All right. Well, you're playing that because you can't do anything else, and I think you're rewinding because the creatures that attack into it die to it anyway. Mm, yeah. Otherwise, what would you save the rewind for? Last mage, but there's no mech, so mm -hmm. probably not. Oh, is that? Was like, maybe she was holding onto it for like Antonitis turns, but it's certain. Or... Right, so no, that's... that's 16. Yeah, that's not enough. But you you do you do end up doing that for uh, the trade for right? the trades, and because you don't want to draw and be left at seven life and actually lose a game to a fireball, you have to heal here. So considering that, you should just savage roar first. Let's see what you get. Meta ray. No. Oh, yeah, it's your favorite. Card. That would have been so crazy with it. Like, well, he's, he's still with the boss because then he could just hear power, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. He could have just paid two to, to get out of range of Fireball. Yeah, I believe it. Is stable portal stable number portal. two. Yeah, let's do this. Come on, Eloise. Show us the show us kill stone. Oh. oh. A little late here. A little late. Actually, Unstable Portal could have won the game. Yeah, still, still could have. I Not guess. Not with Leroy, but a smaller charger. Like uh, would Arcane twice. Golem would have yeah, done Arcane it. Golem. Yeah, Arcane Golem. Just a, even a three attack charge, no, four had before. It would have to be exactly an arcing goal because Reckless Rocketeer was too pricey. Uh, uh, would it Corcoran be? Elite? Would it, Cor no, Reckless Rocketeer would be exact exact lethal. lethal. Exact yeah, lethal. you can yeah, replay yeah. with a discount. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Yep. Yeah. Wow. All right. Just most charges. Does it, does it still have the discount? One, one second. No, 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 no. You, to come you, pay, you pay three for it you, first, right. so you can. Pay two. Three. Oh, no, you can't. Play, you can't pay six. The you're right. Yeah, pays two. It's no. When you return two, to your hand, three, and then six, you couldn't play six a six again. mana charge. Yeah. You need Corcoran Elite, basically. Corcoran or Arc and Golem, right? That's it. Like yeah. two, two, and uh, two, one, and then the four. Mm. Anyway, nail them back to uh, you know potential swing. They can get the series. It's not impossible. They're four four right now. Yeah, um, they they've tied it up, and uh, I believe Elvis is now benched. Right? We talked about her being right. benched. So, is that is that a big deal? There's only a druid left. Um, there's a druid left on Paladin on help? Temple Storm side, and on the other we have I believe the Patron Warrior and another druid. And the Paladin ties just one with his. So there's Paladin and Patron. Oh, right, just just one of the druid. Yeah. So, yeah, we have the Patron Warrior and the Paladin. Is she benched though? Uh, I, I believe she must be because I think she just played the and mage. The druid prior. didn't get played, and the mage, yeah, she has right. to be benched. There's no doubt that she's benched right now. I thought she lost three in a row, but I mean, it's for sure she lost the last two. Um, yeah, so got how, do you, how do you feel hyped matches up against the two decks on the other side now? Well, against the warrior, it's probably slightly favored. Uh, against the druid, against uh, sorry, I have to keep saying druid. Against the paladin, it's uh, probably slightly unfavored, but I think it's still very, very close. Yeah, if you get like an early keeper, maybe something to take care of a shield and mini bot, they don't mm -hmm. have the, the best draw ever. I believe RDU's deck is hyper aggressive. Yeah. Well, I mean, his other deck was pretty aggressive too. Yeah. So. He plays a lot less secrets as well than some of the, of the other lists. I think he's running like seven total instead of the, the nine that you very often see. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe even six. I don't know. I'm not too sure exactly what the copies are, but I don't think I've even seen competitive spirit in his deck. Uh, I don't remember yeah. everyone's playing the base too many three, secret Bat Palo. Yeah, back, too so. many people play. Uh... Yeah, uh, I mean, every, it's, every it's, team it's pretty, pretty hard to really figure yeah. out. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think I'd go with RDU over over Life Coach. Not not because of like this matchup. It's because if the Patron Warrior loses to the Druid, the Patron Warrior has like maybe an okay matchup against the, the, mage. the mage. Yeah. So if it's the last one, you're still fine. Once like, the I think if the happens, Palin has to go up against the Mage. It might not work out if the mage just gets an okay hand yeah, at the start. Yeah, that's it. Good, good yeah. blast mages can just take it. Early mechs that control the board and negate some or, of the secrets. Yeah, the warrior the just has some more play. Yeah. So it's there's not some, as coin flippy. So there's some little mind games going on here. Like who's going to get cornered in this spot? Yeah. Because yeah, they know what they're getting on hype side. but I think uh, RDU makes a lot of sense. This is probably the yeah. most impactful choice. Mm -hmm. Like as far as the, the what you put out. Very often it doesn't matter. But in this case, I think it does because the bench rule... Uh, modified the dynamic of the wide eyes of life coach. Pickups. Yeah. 
What did we pick? I don't know. Your eyes aren't even yeah, that yeah, big. Yeah. You can't even pull it off. You need some surgery. I didn't sleep enough the past two days. <laughs> you also need a different beard. You have to get a little more. I haven't more. slept enough the last, like, I have to four shave years. the sides what? and then put yeah. it on the, underneath. You say the last four years? Yeah. You should probably do some sleeping grip. How, how much do you sleep per night? Six, seven. Six, That's seven. That seems, that seems about what I do. That's above average, I think. No. No, no hell no. Oh, come oh, on. No. There's no one. They say that you need eight hours a night. No one gets eight hours. A lot of people You need, you need nine and a half hours. You need nine and a half? Yeah. So I, I've heard eight. Why, why do they say eight instead of nine and a half then? Because uh, it makes people feel better. You're also supposed to split it up, right? That's what I've heard. That you're supposed to split it up in two different things. I don't know about that. I don't yeah. know. But there's a gene that lets you sleep less and still be fine, right? Maybe you have it. Yeah, they did. I want that. Yeah. They, they, they do. I, I asked them to do some transgenic stuff on me, but I don't think it's legal yet. But there is a gene. You asked them to do Yeah, I was like, stuff. who's them? I was like, why not? I was like, why not? In if you Canada? Can make... Yeah. In Canada? Yeah, Canada's a... Those, those corrupt genologists. It's the wild north up there, man. Megill, man, they've got these people just working on this. <laughs> Off topic again. Anyway, back to the, the drawing board, I guess, for these two uh, these two teams. Yeah, I mean, looks I... like there might be some issue here because they are taking quite a while. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be RDU versus Hype. So... Yeah, kind of what we expected. Seems to be a slightly better pick than yeah. the Patron. Yeah, maybe something with the remote client yet again. We've had it a I couple mean, times. It... If if you lose, it's whatever. It's still about the same chance as the grid patient. But if you win, you're in, I think you're in a slightly better spot. Yeah, I agree with you there. All right, uh, we have not seen too much of hype through. I think one game. I think it might have won the first time. I think you playing. lost once, won the second try, but I think you got just like blown out the first game. So it wasn't much of a game. <laughs> I, I believe it was like a standard mid range though. Mm. Um, I don't remember seeing yeah. anything crazy on like on. I think I think it's the new standard mid range where you have yeah. Darnassus, where you have uh, a few more early game cards. Yeah, and, like just, just topping out with Ancient of Lore, maybe not even Ancient of War in their deck now. Now with this Paladin, you actually keep Mysterious Challenger in every hand. You know, it's kind of interesting you ask that because I've seen people keep it and it goes horribly wrong. I think you and I have guessed at a game or, or two where somebody keeps it for insurance purposes I, and they just backfire. I know if you go backfire. second, you keep it. Yeah, of course. If you have a good curve and go second, you keep it. Yeah, definitely. So if going first might make it a little weirder, but you're going to be behind on cards, so maybe equalizing that disadvantage. Um, oh, wow. Wow, he has the uh, pretty good hand against anything aggressive that can come out of the Paladin deck here. Uh, this is mm. the kind of hand Hype wants in this matchup. Yeah. It is pretty good, but all of the... Oh, okay, now now, now we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> this is pretty much unstoppable from Hype. I mean, his turn three is looking a bit clunky because he's got no three drop. Well, um, he might get a five. Right. Oh, yeah, you're right. He, like, half his deck probably just fits on if that. If he gets, turn. like, a Druid at the Claw, it's, it's tough. Kings doesn't even break that. Oh man. Uh, double Aspirant, is that worth it? Or do you just go for the Silence, Innervate, and then kill the Spider? I like the Double uh, double Aspirant, because okay. like, okay, you might kill one of them. So what? Yeah, I just have another one waiting. Right. And I can get... You get a better turn next turn. Yeah. 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 You also threaten a 7 draw, what? if you don't kill any. So... Hmm. Notice uh, Hype likes to talk to himself a lot while he's uh, playing Hearthstone. He was able to just deny a creature from the Paladin, which is always a very strong play. Uh, wow, that's awkward. I mean, you, you kind of have to go for the Cog Hammer. Yeah, it's not that awkward. It's just... Cog Hammer is just pretty nice. Yeah, do you pop the Spider first, or do you let him pop it, and then you Blessing of Kings, whatever's left? Uh, I think you pop the Spider first to, to kind of uh, hedge against Silence. Okay, makes yeah. sense. You also have, like, as you said, Blessing of Kings in your hand. It makes right. it a little better. You have multiple targets for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the problem with Hyde's hand, I think, is he's going to have to cycle that Wrath just to make sure that he finds better options. Because sometimes hands like these end up depleting themselves very fast if they're answered. Um, Moz somehow made it on the stream again. Yeah, I don't know. Froyan looked amused at what a Moz did. There's, there's been a lot of Trump because he's got you know the shirt with his own face on it. There's been a lot of Kibbler as well. There's a lot of the uh, Kibbler playmats just lounging around the uh, the house. Yeah, but it's not as good as the Alpha Draft shirts. Oh yeah, the eight that we're giving away, and uh, you guys can win one. They're going to be signed by the players, and they're uh, you can enter to win by just telling us uh, when your favorite players, maybe some of your favorite moments on the Archon. We are so smooth, Crib. Mm -hmm. That was a great segue, guys. Uh, Alright, well, you have to wonder why RDU wanted a bunch of stuff, so you kind of are playing around Kings at this stage. 
Yeah, I mean, there, if it's he swipes here, it's a waste because there's no muster played yet. Right. So you no, kind of have to never. Swipe. Yeah, it makes no sense at all. No, you, you know, you never swipe because Wrath does the same thing. You yeah. Draw a card. Yeah, you cycle Wrath here, use your hero power, and just run it to take the shield yeah. off. Cycling is also achieving exactly what he needs to do, which is guaranteeing that he stays ahead. Because once the mysterious challenger comes out, um, it's you pretty much need a lot to, to contest it. Uh oh, that's that's odd. Okay, that's trouble. That's definitely asking for trouble. That's... Say, he's at least gonna pop the shield here for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. All right. Well, uh, Artie's like, thanks, buddy. I, I just wanted a Kingsma dude. Kingsma dude. Yeah. <laughs> Kingsma dude. New play. All right, that denies the mana crystal. That puts Hype back on four mana. And the like, full board clean. Well, I think you you kind of want to keep her for tempo, but you kind of want to wrath. I'd probably keep her for tempo just because turn like there might be a shredder coming from uh, the Paladin players. A lot of them have been running that kind of, uh, mm. of deck, and you know juggler muster you can probably handle, so that's not a worry. Okay. Two four out is uh, the only thing you need to handle a shredder. All right. Uh, well, that's a juggler muster combo. Two have to hit, which makes it a 50 yeah, 50. I kind of like the juggler shielded minibot redemption, but I'm also a little biased. Yeah, I mean, if you attack with a cog hammer here, you only have to hit with, you know, a few two of knives. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's two. a little bit two easier. Of, it's yeah. arcade missiles. Yeah. It's the 50% arcade missiles hit. Yeah. Isn't it like. What is it? What was the argument before? People were dumb. Yeah, I know people were dumb, but like, what was the argument? 66? There was no or... argument. No. No, some people argued. Oh, God. Yeah. But it's Twitch chat. Like, yeah, I guess. Twitch chat. I mean, Twitch chat right now is yelling that RDU has lethal. So. <laughs> but, but he does, but he does. Like, if you look at his hand, like, Mr. Challenger into Avenge, into Blessed Champion off the top, you can set up for that quite nicely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it looks like he is going to go for the muster for battle play here. And it's hey, all going to hey. miss. Here we go. Well, Swipe's going to clean this up pretty well, too, here for height. Yeah, but here's the deal, though. Swipe is great for RDU because yeah, he has the initiative. Yeah, I mean, you know, Hype doesn't really have much else going on here, though. His hand is uh, pretty clunky with just removal spells. Now there's a lot going on, on with the hand, though. Oh, yeah, well, Dr. Booms does that pretty often. Yeah, against Repentance? I don't know. There's a oh, Repentance in RDU's right. deck. Now we'll have to test for BGH, maybe, right? We're gonna have to test for everything. Wow, that's a good draw. Yeah, so repentance. Only four secrets. Yeah, there's, there's no competitive spirit, I think. No, there, there's either no competitive spirit or there's no second redemption. Oh, that's true. We were talking about that last time as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of uh, me. Actually, Double you might just rat. not play around redemption and it might just kill that with two rats. Yeah. I, I mean, think that's the play. That could be the play, yeah. It could looks... that be the play? If you if you hit that with two rats, you can maybe swipe it later. I mean, he hasn't seen a single redemption yet. That's the thing; like, he doesn't know. Mm. Like the redemption in RDU's hand is still a secret tech. It's four secrets, so hype knows something is weird. He doesn't have to see redemption to know something's missing from this equation. Yeah, it's in RDU's hand, but like, how can you even eliminate yeah. one without yeah. trying yeah. everything and just messing up at some stage? Yeah, you just have to guess and hope you're, you're right 20% of the time. Yeah. yeah. So you just kind of vomit the double wrath and hope something happens. It looks happens. like he's going to. Yeah, he doesn't look happy about it, though. Look at his face. He's like, struggling to enjoy what's happening. Wait, was, that, was that a cycle pick? Might have been, but I don't think so. All right, if there's no double redemption for RDU, then he's gonna have to play the shield mini bot. Right? He doesn't attack anyone. Oh, there's no redemption! Dr. Six countered! Wow. Alright, so shield mini bot, redemption, divine favor draws one card. Event was not what RDU was looking for. I think you might want to save Divine Favor after maybe a lore. I mean, the Drew's at 28. Whenever lore gets drawn, it's drawn two cards. You want to keep up with that. Yeah. An interesting thing here is that there's a Repentance, so, you know, Dr. Boom is not going to do nearly as much as Hype needs it to, but he has the edge as far as the minion quality coming forward, so... Yeah, his top decks are going to be a lot better going for it. Exactly, yeah. like, RDU stands to maybe get another Mysterious Challenger, but he's going to get, what, two secrets at the most, maybe one even. It's going to come down to how big this Divine Favor is going to be in this game. I don't think I'd mind the Innervate Hero Power here. Uh, to kill a 1-1? One -one? But you have, you, he would have had to attack into Noble Sack last turn. In order to justify it, mm -hmm. which he didn't do, so. You're right. 
Oh, Shredder's sweet. No sack deck would have been pretty good. Yeah, I don't know why he didn't attack, but... He just ran out of time. Maybe. That's possible. I, I think that's exactly it. But he, what, he, what he, if, did, he did run out of time. What if... The, yeah, I mean, what could have been the worst case scenario? Nothing, really, because there's no redemption, so nothing bad can happen right. out of it. Ribboard. Nah, hype looks confused. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. Okay. Yeah, lore would actually give hype. Like if he if he plays lore and innervates something afterwards, it's pretty good. Oh. Well, yeah. he's actually a pretty good draw. He can do rid of his board if he wants to. Has he triggered redemption yet? No, I think he's going to attack. It's gonna trigger redemption no. and avenge. Noble sack. And uh, get down, and get down. Yeah, yeah. and then he's so gonna go. The for... get down is gonna spawn again. It's gonna be another two one on the board. Then he um, silences innervate swipe. He needs avenge to hit on the shredder. Then he silences the shredder and swipes the shredder. Yeah, and then he actually probably it's, wins it's the so, game. It's a fifty fifty. Basically, win the game. Yeah, eliminates everything off the board. Yeah, he clears the board, clears all the secrets, and has no hand for RDS divine food. Well, that seems to be the play he's gonna go with here as well. 50 50. There we go. If it hits on the dude, it's a lot worse, by the way. Yeah, because they kill the shredder, the, the keeper, and then you're going to take eight damage from that uh, minion. I mean, you can always. Does just... it go on. Ah, on... Uh, oh, no. I mean, you, you can still ping. Yeah, you can still silence it off, sorry, and go for the, uh, the innervate swipe anyway, because you can contest that dude. It'll be on two health after swipe. Yeah, it looks like what he's going to do here. Uh. Is he silencing or just pinging? I guess pinging makes sense, yeah. Now, one dead card in RDU's hand if he picks up the second divine. Oh, oh my god! My that god. Is really amazing. Bad for RDU. This is that amazing! Is amazing. Okay. What is even happening? Oh no, he can divine favor! Double secret divine favor, it gives him two spells. Oh yeah. my god, Crip! <laughs> Does RDU see it? Does RDU see it? That's the play, like. You have to cycle to your next divine favor. You don't care if you give him cards. Uh, you don't care if you give him secrets. How do no. you how do you defuse them? Okay, well, with you, you, Cho? What you you have a weapon for your for the noble sack? Yeah, you can trigger it now, but then advantage buffs the. You can't trigger it now because you won't play. It no, next game. turn, yeah. Yeah, next turn. But how how do you deal with? Well, here we go. What a clown fiesta! Hype that, is that's like, are you kidding here? me right now? He knows what's happening. Yeah. He knows RDU is getting the only divine favor he ever would have gotten. Yeah, and he's gonna find another one. Just look, another secret with another. No, he's just hoping to draw minions to play out of his hand. Of make course. Hype's divine favor useless. Yeah, exactly. To negate what Hype wants to do. And that four mana is very likely he picks up exactly. Yeah, there we go. Minion, minion. Curve, curve. But you don't you want to play that spell? Yeah, not now. No. You don't want to do that one. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> not, not, not worth it. Not worth it ever. He's gonna hold on to this. Uh, oh, I thought he might have it. There might be a chance that he holds on to Abusive Sergeant uh, so he can get his Lawker Cho to run into something maybe at some point in time to get it off the board. But... Didn't keep the. Because he's getting another Light's Justice. Alright, not too bad. Not too bad. The mind games. Do you just charge the Druid into Cho? Do you know there's Noble Sack? You can't. Oh my god, this is horrible. You have to, like, Hero Power, attack into it, trigger Avenge, then use Drill of the Claw to kill something. Wow. Or do you might actually just do this? Yeah, Hype knows exactly which two of the secrets they are to because <laughs> they go to his hand. Yeah, usually you try to troll people with that on ladder, it never works, but this is kind of my dream tournament. You just love all the crazy RNG stuff. Like when Lower Cho comes out, you get excited, right? Yeah, like I don't get excited when Zappomatic comes out because I think it's like too too straightforward. Mm -hmm. But I get excited when Lower Walker Cho does, you know. And that guy's cool. Yeah, Lower Walker really spices up the game. I think we need to have like uh like Pandaren Shredder, which always drops Cho. That's a pretty good idea, actually. We need like a muster for battle for Dolorka Cho. Yeah, that'd you be so... three <laughs> Two, three Cho's right away. It's like seven mana, and it's called Break the Game. Uh, You'd burn away like your entire deck in the next two turns. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Think, no, he's just not going to trigger the secrets. So he builds up a hand that RDU cannot drop. Uh oh. Will that work out? Uh, I don't know. What is, what is RDU left? He, he, he has like he might have a left. one secret left. One left, yeah. yeah. He, he actually might not have many cards left. Yeah. By the way, because his... he divine favorite, he he cycled in the the secrets the from the tree. Yeah, he's got ten cards left. This will pull at least like one or two. I think one, maybe seventeen. Yeah, yeah but he's I winning the long game though. Yeah, he can only have one left. 
The zero. The zero. Yeah. Okay. He's playing like a very no. Low it, it might be. It might be just uh, another noble sack. Yeah. No, right. Yeah. Because that's the third noble sack. That's yeah. that was chode twice. It's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. You, you can't actually understand. Oh, what's you happening. can't give him savage roar. No, no, no. You can't there's do that. no e savage roar. Yeah. No, 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 no. Suicide. This is over. Um. The six six actually makes this really awful for uh, for hyped. Because it's bigger than anything. Oh. Oh, so he's he's gonna draw four cards here. Is he hoping to find a swipe? No, he's already played two swipes, right? Is there a swipe yeah. left? Yeah. Is there a swipe? He he has five draws to find a swipe. Does he have a swipe? No, he's played two swipes. I think he played two swipes. Uh oh. Rip. Well, you definitely don't wild growth. Okay, I guess you wild growth. Why do you wild growth? Um, because it's actually pretty cool. So it's like impossible for him to divine favor you. <laughs> oh, but he, he might just play. Oh, you know what? There's a potential like mill because you always get more cards with wild growth than you actually can dump. Because you're giving it to your opponent, he has like one excess mana plus wild growth and another okay. excess mana. Did Art? Did Hype just kill himself? I, I think he did. Yeah, yeah. I think that's over. Hype is not in his chair right now. Already used Jaws dropped. I concede, I concede to you. RDU with the win, match point for Nihilum after this. Lord Walker Show makes wow. this um, a pretty interesting. He's pretty happy about this game. It was pretty fun. Um, I feel like Hype was doing fine Untouched up until they gave him Savage Roar. Turns out Paladins don't have a card that does that. I right? don't know, man. Like, yeah. if you think about the six six on the board, I don't know if Hype was actually fine because it, like the the six six alone killed the Jewel of the Claw. Well, he he just had combo in his deck. Paladins at like twenty. Yeah. That's how yeah, that's how Druid wins games. Right. He's I not guess... gonna have a board left over after that turn. Yeah, like, that's mm, the problem. The RDU is gonna attack down his board there, you know, the six six is gonna take care of the of the Druid of the Claw, and he's gonna be able to just trade in and hopefully just win from there. But the yeah. moment you pop noble sack, another one comes out. Yeah. So it's, that was uh, a crazy game. Just low walker cho, like every time it comes out, the games are never normal after that. <laughs> I should like I think this. Low Walker Cho actually won the game for RDU. Yeah, yeah, yeah getting did, the divine did, favor. All they had were two junk secrets yeah. and divine favor on yeah. zero cards. Yeah, it let him upgrade into like actual spells. Yeah, yeah. it let him up. It let him, it let him cycle into the the actual cards that did stuff. Yeah, I mean that was, yeah. I mean, you know, he was he, he was very unhappy when it came out, and then realized, yeah, well, actually, this card did just kind of win me the game for me. Right. Yeah. No other yeah. card would have had anywhere near that kind of impact from that spot. Well, okay, here comes life coach. Um, <laughs> Again, not a favored win against the, the Druid, but uh, I don't even believe this. I think, I think he's okay against the Mage. I think it is very close to fifty percent. The, the thing is, um, you've got to win. He's got two tries. Yeah, Life coach can do it. Right, even at like a forty percent win rate, you you might be able to get one out of this. Uh, statistically, I think at forty percent win rate, you're still going through theoretically uh, right. going in. So, like even Druid Druid being bad doesn't really make this impossible to win especially since the fire war axe the aspire is a problem mm -hmm. but the fire war axe negates well, that right away and sometimes that's a dead card it's great yeah, like, yeah. two tries is is what like 64 percent yeah it's win. actually a, like pretty good yeah it's it's way good there's no reason for him to be afraid of uh of losing this plus life coach he is just very good his time way. plays best yeah. that's what life coach does do you think he has the best animation before the game of all the players in the tournament i think he might have. Yeah. yeah i think he has the best animation in the game Oh, okay. All right. Just life coach's face. <laughs> yeah. Just puts puts Hearthstone on such an intense level that like no other player's face does yeah. for me. He is the uh, the incarnation of wizard poker, I think. <laughs> you know, he was you know a poker player before this and uh, played a lot of like heads up poker where you know you play one on one. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if he did like the same thing. If, if he wrote like, in. Uh, that's how he wins. He just maybe. intimidates you with that with, yeah. that, with that face. He takes three minutes on every decision, and you eventually just tilt off on the other side. Yeah. Do you want to pay the blind? Let me think. <laughs> well, you do think most of the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. three minutes on the <laughs> three, three minutes on a blind is pretty is pretty next level. Yeah, it's just you know at some point in time if you take that long for decisions in any game, you uh, you mm -hmm. run into what's called like circular logic. You're just back to the original thoughts that you yeah. had, and you're not actually progressing anywhere. Hearthstone does that a lot, I find, just because it's a mm. card game and you always, if you go one step too far, you're back to where you were a second ago um, in a thinking process, so. All right, well, um, 
I think Hype is a little bit of an emotional player, so uh, let's see if that last, like, really weird game actually affects this one. Mm, he's got a pretty good hand, though, against Warrior. If no Fire War uh, gets picked up, I can see, I can foresee uh, Hype getting this wow. one. Really, I love the lag on Life Coach's camp. Yeah, it was so it's good. The best. Yeah. Look at this photo. Of he's up, he's super it. Saiyan mode is happening right now. Oh god. Oh my god. It makes him even I feel more like intense. I've already lost against Life Coach. Yeah. yeah. It makes him. He's already like super intense. It makes it even more intense yeah. when he just frozen halfway through. There's a secret pallet on the Druid side of the board. That can't be right. Unless it's other from the last game because yeah, Little really Walker showed us some magical stuff. <laughs> Uh, but like, the Fire War Axe for, from Life Coach, you know, he had one mulligan, or two, I think, one mulligan, I think, to get it. Um, considering Hyped's hand is definitely yeah, I mean, solid. Life Coach's hand, I think, is really, really a lot better than Hyped. Even though Hyped has the Innervate plays for some really cool stuff, uh, the Fire War Axe counters that, and Life Coach has a lot of redraws off the Acolyte yeah. the rest of his hand. So, really, the only thing that, that's kind of not going Life Coach's way is the fact that he doesn't have the coin, which is usually an advantage in this matchup, I feel. So they're changing this to a picture, which looks a lot less daunting. What? Yeah. It looks pretty know. much the same to me. It does it? Are, yeah. are you that scared? Are you scared of this guy as the guy who actually like goes Jedi mind stands on you? I mean, they're both so intimidating. Well, how do you how do you choose? Here, hype types thinking, do I want to test a fiery war axe and then play nothing? I, I, I think... I think maybe he should do that next turn. Yeah, with the intervene, keep the coin, right? No, not well, just that, because uh, just it's, it's not that likely that Life Coach will just play the Fire War Axe on two for no reason. So if if you do wait until next turn... You're screwing you, up the curve Yeah, a you bit. screw yeah. up the curve a little bit. He doesn't have a three drop. Well, do you just wait to Druid with the Claw as well? And you can just make a four six and get in a lot more damage that way. Cruel Task executed would punish you, but that's about the only answer thing. the war you can right. have, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little I just, less I just feel if you save the coin, you kind of... Make it so you won't have too many bad turns in the future. Yeah. Innervate's actually more clunky than coin in a lot of cases. Yeah, because you just you feel like you're not saturating probably mm -hmm. sometimes. So I, I think I think no play is the play. Yeah, I definitely like shreddering next turn if you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Is it shreddering or shredding? Uh, probably shredding actually. Well, depends because it's a shredder. Oh, well, I pull shredder the here. Yeah. He gives and... uh, he gives life coach a pretty nice play. He's happy. And again, we are in a situation where uh, the Shredder gods might be kind or cruel. Lore Walker Cho. You just want to watch the world burn, yeah. don't you? No, I want to watch the like, I want I want to watch the world trade spells and be kind to each other. That sucks. <laughs> well, the old Lance carrier. Stop poking me. <laughs> well, you did do some face damage. That was important, but. That was important. Yeah, it was important. If, if the Innervate play doesn't stick, it usually doesn't really accomplish much. I mean, yeah, because like, look at what his next two turns are going to be. He's going to be hero powering. Well, I've, worse coached, than that. Uh, I've seen a lot of players in a position like exactly this one play the frothing and kill the minion that comes out. Oh, um, God. But the three damage. Uh... So many cards. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually a big fan of like the, the tempo frothing berserk that yeah. you've seen like, way more popular lately out of. Uh... Your Patriot, because you know you can just steal a game a lot of times. Otherwise, they yeah, have to play weirdly. Look at those whirlwind effects, and like, I yeah, think you can just wait until turn no. six. Yeah, in this game, I think you can just wait. I'm saying in general, I'm a big I think fan you, of that. Then you really. attack with with the acolyte, and would you then, you just play, then you just play the ghoul. I think. Yeah, so you would never enrage the acolyte for two draws right now. I think with how this game is going, there's a chance your ghoul stays alive until turn six and kills the druid. Wow. The, uh, All right, I could see that. With the yeah. song frothing. That uh, makes sense. I think that's what he's going over right now, if he actually wants to take that line of play. I don't... I don't. It doesn't seem like obviously the best. It might not even be the best, but I, I think it's an option that he's considering. The whirlwind right now, that would be so sick, but it would, I don't think it would work out the way he wants it to. Maybe just attack. Well, I think Inner Rage was better if he played it first, and he didn't, so... Yeah, so he's getting his opponent a good swipe, if there is one, but there isn't one. It's not a great swipe, you yeah. get two yeah. cards. It's alright, right? Like, you're kind of... you're gonna take it if it shows up. Mm. Or wouldn't you? Hype's in a lot of trouble right now. I don't... Do you just have to silence the Frothing Berserker here? Oh, God. It's, like, pretty bad, but... You gotta be worried that you're gonna be taking, you know, upwards of ten of it from it next turn. frothing and running your one one into it. Yeah, yeah. To, to deny the acolyte card draw, but then your keeper of the grove dies to war axe plus acolyte, which makes the whole thing even worse. 
Um, yeah. But then you start to scale a little bit better, hopefully. Yeah, than I, I think so. There. I, I like, really think to, so. You start playing, you know, a five drop into hopefully the, a good board for you, you know, with Emperor on turn six and then Ancient of Lore on turn seven plus maybe something else. Yeah, you can also do to the claw charge if you really need to kill the frothing next turn, yeah. let's say. So there's that possibility where you just sound off. Um, that sets up to roll be trading at the time. Yeah. You, know, you have to keep your, your Druid of the Claw at least. I don't know, let's see what Hype decides to do. The Innervate play early on was really all in on the assumption that the opponent didn't have Fiery. Otherwise it was going to get punished without nice. a follow up. Yeah, he does that, alright. Yeah, that was the uh, other play that I was This is an unbelievable amount of damage. Yeah, it's pretty much, with Slam here, it's pretty much it. No, it's not even Slam. You can Warsong Commander, ghoul? Uh, then play Ghoul, and then Enrage the Ghoul to have a whirlwind effect. And, and you pop if it? If your Frothing didn't die this turn, it probably won't die next turn. I think the frothing, like being a, a like pretty high amount of attack, is is fine. You think just whirlwind yeah. well, and in a rage here is good enough? No, I like the way he's playing this. He's gonna play around Druid the Claw this turn. He's he's nothing. Yeah. He might play Ghoul here. Yeah, just, no, he's gonna play Ghoul behind yeah, this and exactly. play around uh, mm -hmm. Druid the Claw. Oh, maybe not. Life Coach does what Life Coach does. I think he's setting up for a really. Oh my god! Yeah. Picked up Emperor Thor. This. This is probably a loss for Tempest Storm. Well, not quite. It's not over. I mean, he's forced into Drew of the Claw or Swipe Top deck. Yeah, definitely Drew of the Claw charge. There's no question about that. Yeah, um, but... And that's what he needs to, to come back. And he, he's going to have to force, though, to kill yeah, the he's Emperor. Also, he's going to have to trade his Force of Nature for Emperor here, and Life Coach is going to get a full trigger from it with a Warsong Commander and, you know, Valrages and stuff in his hand. Oh, I mean, my just, God. This is looking worse and worse for Hyped. Hype could actually really benefit from a swipe draw here. Yeah, definitely. It would it would really give him the opportunity to keep a win condition as opposed to just losing straight up. Oh, swipe would be good. Mm. Oh man. Yeah. I think you might just emperor here. Just emperor and hope. Yeah. I mean, if if you emperor you affect your own combo. You develop yeah. a win condition from a stage where you're just not going to make anything happen. Yeah, you can get a Savage Combatant to be really cheap and maybe have it kind of rule the board for a while if you get to that kind of state. You know, if Life Coach has like all combo pieces in his hand. I mean, you're kind of forcing him to have Death's Buy, but if he does, you lo you give him another trigger on Emperor, and then how do you come back from that? But then again, maybe you have to take that risk. Yeah. I feel like, you know, the... The Innervate plays on turn one, you know, the Innervate coin into something. I've seen that play backfire way too much, mm -hmm. especially against decks like Priest, where they have Shadow War Pains yeah. uh, or Shadow War Deaths on some of the bigger ones, or uh, a weapon coming from Warriors or an Execute. Yeah, like him Emperoring here would be consistent with the way that he played the game right. on turn one, you know, the kind of just move in. And, you know, you said he's an emotional player. You have to wonder if, like, what happened in the last game maybe affected him just kind of maybe That's like game. YOLOing a little bit. That's game, right? Like, not right now, necessarily, if he doesn't want to take it. I, I imagine he will, because he's no, got Inner Rage Whirlwind. I think whirlwind. he'll save one turn to do a Battle Rage, probably. Really? Inner Rage sounds like a pretty... Like, Inner Rage Whirlwind sounds pretty sweet with a Battle Rage on the back end. Oh, Battle Rage now? I see. That's interesting. Yeah. You can even play the Armor Smith if you want, because why not? More, more armor is always good. Well, why don't you play it first? Uh, but... Yeah, he just, like, missed a point of armor, but... Life Coach misplayed. Yeah, he gave, he gave a little... Uh, the grin, the acknowledgement yeah. that yeah. Twitch chat is probably screaming at the top of their lungs, bad coach, bad coach. Yeah, missed yeah. the point of armor. Yeah. Alright. Well, that's four cards. Was that turn good? That I don't... turn was fair. <laughs> yeah, it was fair. Fair? Yeah. I don't know about fair. I know about good. I don't know about fair, though. Uh, damn. What mm. do you do? I concede to you. Yeah, I was going to say, there's always that option. Yeah. Is there some option with like a spell damage swipe? That there's a possibility that he, like, he goes Ancient of, uh, of Lore into a top deck that lets him pick up, say, Archer Drake into swipe, but you don't have the meta to play it, so you'd have to also get the Innervate off the top. Uh, so there's like three cards back to back yeah, that maybe win the game. I think you have to draw into a spell damage swipe Innervate. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Is this over Warsong Commander, Frothing Ghoul? Uh, he can probably make that happen if he attacks with uh, the Armor Smith. It's like lethal. This, yeah, this is lethal. He's, all, he's got lethal on board. No, but he has a Frothing with charge. Yeah, yeah that's has, what I'm saying. He has 15 power in play yeah. right now. Plus, he's going to get to replace one of his patrons after a Frothing Absolutely Blizzard. Absolutely no way that Life Coach doesn't finish the game here. Yeah. He can even shield slam space. something for one extra face damage. Yeah, just create a little extra space for himself here. 
This unstable goal is going to trigger a bunch of patrons and make this frothing berserker way more than lethal. Yeah. And we have the comeback. Life coach finishing it up for wow. Nihilum, who were seemingly out of it. It looked like the Shaman would never go through. But uh, really, if you think about it, the Shaman did better than Eloise's mage deck. Yeah. Well, maybe the that's shaman, why they kept the it for the last. in this round went uh, one, two, right? one and two, yeah. and the mage deck went zero, three. Yeah. So, um, well, it's, I mean, it's fun to, to kind of talk yeah, about and make fun of these decks that do horribly. Yeah. But in, in smaller instances, uh, sometimes things just don't work out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that really was the, the big fall for Tempest. I mean, they were monstrously ahead. It didn't seem there was any hope this Shaman deck could win, but uh, it did. And uh, it was uh, Eloise's mage that really uh, took the fall. Yeah. It finally didn't draw the second Lava Burst in a game. It seems that, you know, that might have been able to get him to win the game. He finally oh, got to actually who's in that door? It. Oh my god, who's that? Who's in that door? Oh, oh, who's in All that right. door? Well, I'm we not in that the, door. the two Nylon players who are here at the event. We yes. have uh, Life Coach and Vice. Going to give us some words. All right. You're giving me? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. sure. Oh, you've been honored to do the interview. That That's awesome. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Get in! I'm slow. You're, you're going to be fine. The wound, you... the wound will heal. I don't know. I can do Hello! Hey. Okay, I guess I'll stay in the middle. I'll just like turn around. I'll be standing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Cool. All right. So congratulations, first of all. Um, that was a bit of relief, I guess, like winning the, the match, considering how it started off. I mean, yesterday was really rough. Uh, watching RDU go with like the really, you know, mech shaman losses back to back. Um, how did you guys feel about the deck after yesterday? Do you still think it's fine or that just had bad draws? I think the deck is still uh, pretty fine. Uh, we had some really rough games with it. Uh, yeah. So like mech decks are always really aggressive. The, Maybe the meta changed here a bit, and we didn't expect every card loss uh, being popular here. But uh, uh, it's, it, it did its work today. So, yeah, it worked uh, out. And let's hope it's just going to do its work. Yeah. Uh, did you talk to RDU a bit? Is he, like, relieved? I guess he's really happy. He must be, right? Yeah, yeah, he is really happy about yeah. it. So, uh, I also heard something about 12 lava bursts in six games. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> it's not the best draws, I'd say. He's had a really rough streak of draws with it. Um, yeah. Your mech mage, however, has been doing great. You know, we haven't seen much mech mage mm -hmm. um, in the past. I guess before the grand tournament came back in. What brought you to bring mech mage to the event? Um, well, actually, um, we were expecting like certain classes, and mech mage seemed to be a quite okay choice. Like, Actually, to be honest, like it was like, of course, not one of the top choices, but we were actually choosing it over a different deck, basically. The same goes for Mixhaven, okay. of course. Yeah. Got it. All right. So you were just targeting a specific line. Did it work out? Like, do you, do you think the classes that you predicted would, would see play, see play? Yeah, that was okay. All right. Sounds right. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be going off against uh, Value Town afterwards mm -hmm. a little later. So we're going to have the uh, winner's match, um, you know, the loser of the winner's match, and the winner of the loser's match, which is Nihilum versus Value Town. It's going to be important because that way you're going to be able to get to second, I mean, second seed place for tomorrow, which is going to guarantee that you don't have to bother um, going through one more, or one extra match. Um, so, yeah, I wish you good luck on that front and uh, keep being good at Patreon. Yeah. Good. Thank you very Thanks. much. All right. So we'll be taking... A break. I, I was just not told that I would do the interview, so I guess I'll just kind of segue into the break. Um, I mean, I have no idea, so we'll be back in 15 minutes, I think. Um, Amaz can confirm that. Yep, he does. All right. Well, we'll be right back. I'm a clown.